Very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the four-star World Tour qualifier final here in Gurgel. And uh, I'm super happy to sit here in front of the Hangara and to have this person next to me, Flo Orli. He is a former competitor at the Freeride World Tour, 70 years, 17 years actually, you competed on the Freeride World Tour. Flo, I'm super happy to have you as a support here in the cabin for the speakers. Yeah, thank you for the invitation, Chris. Also, you're a man with a lot of experience on the qualifiers. I actually had the chance to go down the beautiful face of the Hangara, which is right in front of us this morning as a forerunner and give a condition report to the riders. And I think we are in for a really epic event today. We are in for an epic event. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot see the view right now. Now you can see it. It's sunshine. It's no wind. And also, I would say the weather god was really pleased for, for us. He made some fresh pow available. 40 centimeters flow. What do you think? How, how do the conditions look like? Yeah, we had a very tough winter. All of you know, we had about three or four big snowfalls <laughs> split out over three or four months. But luckily, just the last uh, couple of days gave us the extra snow. Uh, there has been some... Um, safety work at the face, so some slides went down. That means we had to move a little bit to the Lucas right to face, which we'll see in a minute. But in this area, the conditions are great, and the uh, riders are super stoked to have a uh, competition finally in powder snow. And the riders are not only here for fun, they are here for the Freeride World Tour Qualifier Finals, so it's really about getting the ticket for the Freeride World Tour, so the Champions League of free riding, I would say. And uh, let's get ready for it. Let's have a look. Let's see what's going on. Let's get a little bit of emotion, motivation with the next clip. And then we are on here in Gurgel. Flo, Freeride World Tour Qualifier Finals. Maybe for all of you out there watching it live on the mobile, on the tablets, on the screens, what is it, what is, go uh, what is going on today? Well, it's a new system uh, this year, obviously, when the Freeride World Tour comes to the end. Some riders who are not uh, ranked near the top, they drop out at the back, and some young ones are pushing them from the bottom. And the Freeride World Tour came up with this great system now to have the Freeride World Qualifier Finals, which is three events, and this is the last one. That means after this event, the best three results out of those three counts for each rider, and we'll have a ranking, and the top riders in each category, snow, ski, boys and girls, will move up to the Freeride World Tour. And that's what's so um, what's exciting today. Okay, maybe for you out there it's already understandable it's easy i will repeat myself once more so we had three contests we have one in nonda one in jasna and this now is the third contest where two the best two results count so this is going to be a super super hard moment for all the riders if they come down to the finish era and if they celebrate break their run and maybe have the ticket for the freeride world tour Yeah, it's sort of say two events in one. We will crown the winners of the day. We have the winners of the four-star uh, qualifier in Google. But at the same time, once the, the, the event is over, we will get the ranking of, the, of this end of the season, of the finals. And then we'll have uh, a second time the riders cheering, especially those who will make the cut to, for, to the Tour yeah. next year. The Hangara, the face, is known for the big decisions. If we think of Fabi Lange, if we think of Konsti Otner with his huge backflip, maybe we can see it later on. But now the Hangara face, let's have a look at it. Now we get some really, really good pictures from the race drone racing down the hill. And we also have a face check video for you to get the newest update. How it looks, how does the Hangara face look like today? As you can see, we have the start gate here on the right side. The finish area is on 2,220 meters. It's 550 meters of action and it's a northeast exposition flow. What, what does the conditions look like in these expositions? Well, we already have uh, the beginning of April, but it means that uh, at this altitude, at this exposition, we still have a lot of uh, powder snow. So in the face today, we have between uh, 30 and 40 centimeters of fresh powder. And the sun is on it now, but there was hardly any sun yesterday. So it's really virgin as the riders wanted to go for the big drops and high speed lines. Flo, you had the forerun. You had a look into the face. I would say it's one of the most difficult faces out there in the World Tour. Uh, and now you can see it. Why? Flo, please have an explanation for me. 
Yeah, if you look at the screen right now, you see that when the, as the riders are dropping in the top, it is similar to the Montefiore phase, a constant rollover. It's not a phase that gets a, a more more flat as you come down. It just stays steep all the way to the very end. So the orientation is absolute key. So the riders have spent hours and hours the last days to visualize the runs because uh, many of those features look the same, and uh, you can't just go down and r jump over any cliff because you might like or idle top of the next one. So line selection is very very key here on the hangar run. Those who are good in the orientation definitely have a, a slightly advantage today. So orientation is key and we can think of the moment when you stand in the start gate, you know it's all about the World Tour ticket, all of the people dreaming for this ticket and they're standing on top and have to find their line and also prepare some action in the run for us. I'm super happy to be here actually. We're sitting in a cabin directly in front of the hangar face and um, as you said before Flo, on the left side we can see a small slide from yesterday, that's why we made the uh, whole uh, range a little bit narrower yeah yeah as we are looking at the judges getting ready here and looking back to the start right now yeah safety work is one of the main uh, issues in in free riding we all know that when we go out there riding you know we always have to be aware avalanche danger is is uh, always to be um to be taken care of and uh Cox, uh, marcus kogler the mountain guide for over a decade now on the open faces was up there yesterday phase the sixth sector phase and then decided that there's one or two pockets which might not be safe for a competition um so they did some safety work and um actually managed to push quite a lot of snow down and that's why we had to move the whole competition a little bit to the to the lucas right so we're not using like 100 percent of the hunger right now uh, today about uh 60 but it's uh, easily enough because it's such a big mountain and uh still enough to put up a great show for our riders now we can see the face and we will have most of the action on the right side on the left side you see the slide from yesterday evening and uh, that's why we moved the competition a little bit to the right and we also saw the judges we're gonna have one judging panel today and we're gonna see the scores right after the run so we have a live judging system maybe it takes a little bit more time but it also makes it a lot more exciting for us to watch it to see the score and to see the emotion from the riders when they see which ranking they have. Yeah, the live judging is a lot more effort for the organizers and it's very hard to judge us that we have, uh, but we have three of the world's uh, best judges here today with us. Uh, but it is obviously for you and for us much more exciting to have the, the score of a rider at the moment he crossed the finish line or before the next rider. So we have a, a constant ranking. And what is amazing today was very different to when I was still riding as an active uh, competitor. The riders have internet at the top. They watch the live stream. Uh, so the riders, if I'm uh, one of the last pips, I see the ranking and actually know what uh, where position I have to get to be qualified for the World Tour. So for those who are capable of playing that mind game, um, they're, they're doing this at the top. And I think it's an, an extra touch to the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. let's get ready to run and to get a little more excited, maybe we, ha we have the chance to see the last winning run of Konsti Otner, the last time here on the Hunger Face. And I can tell you that's the same action we're expecting right now. So please show us the last winning run from Konsti Otner here at the four star event from Google. Otner geht jetzt in das Rennen um den Titel yeah, und das Ticket awesome der Freeride World Tour. Come on, Konsti! Jetzt hat Gertrude Kip Gas. Wenn wir da drauf schauen, was braucht er, um hier vorne mit dabei zu sein? Wenn er gewinnt, traue ich mich zu behaupten, ist er mit dabei mit einem zweiten Platz und den dritten wird es ja. knapp. Aber der hat hier eigentlich wow, wow. alles voll und selbst in der Hand. Er hat ja, versprochen, genau. dass er da eine ja, Backflip genau. zeigt. Oh, was kommt der massive ihm? Backflip! Alter Schwede! Kosti, bist du das nicht? Was passiert hier? Das. Ein Traum, geht schon. Das Bleib war mehr. Jetzt gefühlt ganz safe, der ja, massivste ganz safe, Backflip in Schau. der Freeride-Geschichte. Unglaublich. Und jetzt haut das Ding runter. Jawohl, geht schon. Bleib safe, da, da. alter Schwede. Ja, ich habe keinen Käse da hinten. Schau, so. was da ja, ja. abgeht. Da Zart, schaut die, die nimmt er mit. Ja, passt. Okay, Super. Nummer zwei. Super. Mittelbereich. Da in diesem harten Bereich extrem kacke zum Skifahren da. Aber bleib drauf, also nur safe bleiben. Du hast da schon ein massives Manöver in deiner Tasche. Jetzt brauchst du eigentlich nur mal irg unten irgendwas Kleines rausziehen und dann... Dann passt Ach, das geht schon ganz. Auch nicht. Ja. Drück deine Daumen. Das ist mir ja. jetzt. Da noch fein, ganz fein, ganz gut. Bleib drauf.
Da den unten, hat der Schnee der ist hätte so es hart. sich so verdient, dieser ja, Junge. Unbedingt. War in Nonda schon drauf und dran. Aber ein kleines Feature würde ihm nur taugen. Das ah. würde ihm nur taugen und würde für allen die Judges wie, taugen, Max. Wie, was glaubst du, wie geht es dem jetzt? Ha? Ja, Alter, der ist gepumpt bis über die Haarspitzen <lacht> auf. Der war sowas <lacht> von. Schau dir das einmal an. Also die Knierschlotten quasi vor. <lacht> so kannst du. Aber nach dem Move um Geht der da jetzt noch, ja, der der da jetzt noch, noch ja, auf ja, diese Kiste? Er hat es gerade stehen. Er stehen, Freund der Berge. Und das Double. Nimm das Dribble da mit. Und dann nimm dich da mit. Yes. Geht schon, Konzi. Und jetzt bleib, bleib stehen, auf deinen bleib Füßen. Stehen. Wow, geil. Wie geil. Leute, Leute, das ist Freeriden vom Feinsten. Bitte also, erste Sahne. die Zeitlupe von Wahnsinn. diesem Backflip. Zu ja, unglaublich. Da sehen wir, was mit Action heute auf uns zukommt. Der Winning Run von Konzi hat ihn damals auf die World Tour gebracht. Und da haben wir gesehen, was für ein riesen Face der Hanger ist und wie steil er ist. Ich meine, das ist einer von der besten Skifahrer äh, Freerider Deutschlands. Und selbst der muss da mit ganz dosiertem Tempo aber fahren. Also... Wirklich, wirklich ähm, unglaublich, der Hangar aus Berg. Unglaublich. Und an dieser Stelle für alle österreichischen Zuschauer. Wir sitzen hier direkt am Fuße. Schauen Sie sich diese Race-Drohnen-Bilder an. Es ist unglaublich, wie es da hinunter geht. Wir haben, wie gesagt, überall Kameras, Weitlinsen. Wir haben die Race-Drohne. Also wir werden wirklich versorgt mit den besten Bildern hier direkt aus Gurgel, direkt vorm Hangarer Face. Und jetzt sind wir auch schon kurz vor dem Contest-Start. In fünf Minuten geht's dann los. And uh, now we switch to English again to keep it international for all our watchers in front of the screens. And we're gonna have a look at the start list and the first category, starting with the snowboard man here in Gurgel. Okay, so actually we have four categories here at the Four Star World to qualify our finals. It's snowboard man, then taking off with snowboard women, ski women, and in the last category, we setting the fireworks up for the ski men category, where there are three slots left for the Freeride World Tour. Well, I'm sure each of the four categories is going to show us the fireworks, but the men skiers sometimes just put up the score where you have to hold your breath the most. <laughs> That's right, Flo. I'm expecting a lot of action here because we have that nice setup here with the fresh tracks directly in front of, un front of us, ladies and gentlemen. I am super excited right now, but it's getting hot in our cabin because the sun is shining super hard here. Yeah, we see the start gate is still empty, but the snowboard is um, just about to get ready. I wanted to lose a word about the drone fuse we saw before when the race jump was flying down the mountain. Uh, this is something that has been starting to change the, the level in competitions over the last one or two years because the riders actually get those fuse also on D-1. That means the day before the competition, the race drone operators are up here. They fly down from the start gate down to the bottom of the mountain in different uh, lines. And so the riders get the total feeling what it's going to be looking like if they choose one of those lines. And they get a much better feeling for steepness, for size of cliffs and for orientation. So uh, one more big step in free riding to raise the level um, of competition and also in safety. Okay, and if we have a short overview of the snowboard man category, so there is already one spot taken from Liam Rivera, who scored really, really high in the first two contests. So he is already qualified for the Freeride World Tour. And so there is one slot left. And if we look now at the first bips, it's Alex Soria from France. We have all together five nations here in Gurgel. The best riders are coming from the European region one. And uh, we have 13 riders, five different nations, and it's going to be a super hard action. Who can take the win? Who will take the ticket? Yeah, and we did the math, and it's amazing that out of 13 uh, riders today, 11 still have a statistical chance to um, qualify for the World Tour. Because there's, there's three events in the finals here, and only two results count. So um, there's the door still wide open for many of the riders to qualify for, the, um, for next year's World Tour. That's really amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't get the overview right now, don't hesitate. We will provide you with all the most important infos about the ticket, about the contest, how it's, how it's looking like with the ranking. We're going to have some really nice overviews here. And um, hopefully we have the best of the action because I hear right now it's one minute before the start. Yeah, we can see the riders right from here from the truck against the blue sky. We can almost feel the vibrations and the tension up there in the start gate. Um, 
it's always amazing to be up there. You know, all the, the vibe, all the riders, it's getting more and more quiet. Everyone's getting into his zone. The first one's buckling up. You maybe the second one behind him. <sighs> this, it's, this is like anything, <laughs> unlike anything else in the world. Yeah, and in the start gate, we see Bip number one getting ready for drop-in. He has uh, 11th place in Nonda, so the first of the three finals. A third place in Jasna. So there is a lot of chance for the 34-year-old uh, Ali yep. Soria from France to get the ticket to win the spot for the Freeride World Tour. Flo, what's, the, what's about his results before? Do we have some information around Ali? Well, he only did four podiums this uh, winter. One of those uh, was uh, third place in Montefon. Um, so he knows about what it's like to be on the podium. And it's, it's his fifth season now, and he's been proved in every season. And I think his uh, third place in Jasna shows that he is up there with the best. So if he can do a top three, top four result today, the 11th will get kicked away, and he has a serious chance for the Tour. But he has to hammer a really good run down. He has to hammer a really good run, <laughs> that's right, <laughs> and it's also hard. What about if you're going first, Flo, did you ever go first in a contest? Actually, my very first competition ever in Verbier, like 20 years ago, I was the, uh, the first one to drop down, and uh, I kind of like it. Yeah, it's, uh, you don't have to wait for your turn, like, you know, when the contest is on, uh, you, it's your turn, and you have the, the best snow. So, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts in front of the screens. We are ready, Google is ready, the judges are ready, and number, bit number one, dropping in from France, Alice Soria. He is going uh, to the Lucas right side of the mountain. That's exactly where Flo was going this morning. So he really had a close look to your tracks, Flo. And checking the best option here. Yeah, that top part is really a big rock garden. Uh, it's very hard to, uh, to orientate and uh, you can tell now he has to find his way like in between all those rocks, avoid the sharks and then as he uh, comes to the middle part, the things are opening up and there's more room to, uh, to do big airs and to, to go fast. Now it's getting about in the steeper zone, really nice fluent, fluent riding here from pip number one. Yeah, the riders are hardly used to ride powder this deep this season, especially <laughs> not in competitions. <laughs> they got to be stoked. Wow, it's so much slough coming along as well. I think very solid run by Alex so far. Uh, not super speedy, but, uh, but fluid and, and very clean, like very uh, stable on all these airs. And now I actually switch to the direct view from my screen and see him coming. Wow, a huge backflip! <laughs> <laughs> but I think he landed it right and got stuck a little bit in the snow flow. Did you see it? Closer. I just saw a huge cloud of snow and then he was riding out of it. Um, I do know that judges have a um, video screen up there, so they're probably going for the replay right now to know if this was a backslap or whatever kind of uh, safety issue and uh, control issue in the landing, or if it was clean and just a big cloud of snow. It looks like a big cloud of snow and we are happy to welcome the BIP number one here. Let's look at the highlights of his run going in here from the right side, coming from the top. Trying to do a, a, a triple here, maybe. I think he wrote this passage really nicely. And here we now see have a look flip. at this backflip. Yes. Maybe the big snow is his luck because you can't see if there was any backslap or any hesitation in the landing, actually. I'm pretty sure he had his, uh, his uh, back or his ass down on the snow. You can also tell his body language as he was riding out of it, as he was uh, putting his hands in front of his face, being a little grumpy himself because he had it right there. I mean, he landed, he came down in a perfect angle after his backflip, maybe surprised by the deepness of the snow. If you look at the, the hole he left there, that's almost like a meter deep. So maybe he over-rotated after touching the snow. Yeah, and I'm also excited to see what the Hangara will look like later on when the first riders are down there. And now we are waiting for the judges they now have to check where they put his score so that's always like an orientation the first rider to score him higher or lower and then uh, they're gonna uh, compare to this score ladies and gentlemen i think you know as much about judging as we do so um we cannot tell any scores right now i would never do because it's always differently than you think and um yeah right now we see the face and uh, here we can see the start gate on the top here. 
perfectly and already the second starter is here and it's 30 seconds to the next start and we're gonna see pip number two Gabriel Bleton from France also 34 years old he is a skier and snowboarder and the funny thing is he already scored a first place in skiing this year in a, at the one star contest and now riding the finals for the ticket for the period world tour pip number two dropping in yeah gabriel is a ski gabriel is a ski and snowboard instructor and he talked to him yesterday he said he doesn't even oh and we have a crash you have a right crash he's not even beginning. sure what he likes better he likes both of this yeah we here we can't tell about this super tricky snow conditions at the top. Especially if you ride with a snowboard, it's hard. You have only one edge holding yourself. And uh, if there are small rocks or, uh, let's say, small uh, ice cubes inside, it's hard to hold. Still, it was not the biggest mistake. So, uh, you know, if you get a, a good run down, he has still chances uh, to score very well. And if you compare his line now with the one to Alex before, this is a way more challenging line. He goes right through the steepest part of the face and um, at a very fast pace. So oh, the touch heading definitely over have to, to a cliff. consider that. Nice, good Ooh. landing, making it to a double. <gasps> Incredible. <laughs> we didn't see the lower part here. <clears throat> and he's riding it smoothly with a small backslap, I would say, in snowboarding. And uh, this was a huge cliff and definitely the first hello, welcome to the contest and welcome to the four-star finals. Huge drop by Gabriel Beton. We were talking about this uh, before and, uh, and the agreement was that it was only a skier's area, a skier's line, a skier's cliff. But Gabriel just going in there with a huge exposure and hitting it as a double. Let's have a look at the replay. Very amazing lower section. Wow. Here I thought he would take a break after it and mm. turn to the right but no he was just Unreal. straighten it out landing here a double and wonderful well done congratulations wow. to bib number two gabriel breton and, and that's a tough one for the judges because you know what this was not a, a really a backslap he just had his hands back down to stabilize and just yeah and just rolled it out to me that was as clean as you can land a cliff of this size Right now, Gabriel is sitting on the third place, so he has a lot of chances to win with the first place and as well with the second place. He would have the ticket for sure for the Freeride World Tour. And uh, we are still waiting for the result from BIP number one. It's not easy. It's not easy for the judges. As I said, it's just one judging panel. They have to be super correct. They have to be super fast. And... Um, that makes the live judging event here so difficult because uh, they can't do any mistakes here if the riders are down in the finish area, super nervous, waiting for the scores. And um, on the start gate or in the start gate, we already see BIP number three. BIP number three is Christophe Charlet, also from France. We have here a very, very strong field of French riders here, um, 30 years old. Uh, he loves the music gentleman he wrote uh, one time when he started to write qualifier competitions and he's coming direct from Chamonix. Yeah, I know Christoph very well. He was still uh, um, already competing when I was still competing and he's been fighting to uh, reach a spot on the free world tour for 11 years. Oh, and now we get our first now score. Now we get the first score. Gabriel Plateau scoring 80 points, which is a very, very good score for the first, uh, uh, for the first rider. Christoph dropping in three, two, one, drop. And now we are ready watching on bib number three. So there was a small mistake from my side. Ali bib number one got 68 points, Gabriel 80 points, and now we are with bib number three, Christoph Chalet from Chamonix. Yeah, he should actually be a guy um, whom this face suits because he have, has so much experience. He knows so well how to touch the steepness, the size of landings, the snow conditions. That definitely gives him an advantage over, over younger riders. I think you can see that in this upper part. Very smart riding so far by Christoph. Smart riding, getting into the NAR straight from the beginning and now ta heading over to the same part as we saw with bit number one, I suppose. 
and it's definitely hard to keep the orientation here in this phase, making a small double, very good control because there we have the big, big, uh, yeah, the big part which is closed and also he's going for a double with super speed. Not making the landing, ladies and gentlemen. You can see the riders are definitely motivated. <laughs> he also did the double, straighten it out. And I expect a lot of skiers watching this action and now realizing, okay, that's possible. We're going to look for it and maybe changing the one or the another line, huh? Wow, he showed a big heart as well, Christoph. Boy, this huge drop. Unfortunately, his landing not as clean as the one from Gabriel before. So the judges will uh, have to deduct uh, something there. Also, his line was a little slower than the one of Gabriel. So probably not that top score he was looking for. But nevertheless, a great, great display of, of his talent. And, and, and uh, yeah, no fear. I'm amazed, you know. this To go over a cliff by the size 10 plus meters on the snowboard, you have to be very, very confident. And it's much harder to, to stick it, to put it to your feet than it is uh, on skis. So, maybe a short information. No, we're going to look at the highlights before. Let's look at this double coming in with warp speed, <laughs> trying to land it here in the packed snow down there. But um, actually, the landings look quite good. It's still pretty steep there, yeah. But I mean, you, you have to be in a perfect uh, position. And you get twisted just a tiny little bit in the air, which caused this not so perfect landing. And 58 points it is for um, Christopher. 58 points for BIP number three. And at this stage, we have a uh, short information for you guys out there. BIP number four is not in the start, so this name should not be right. I have the information that uh, James got hurt yesterday, so we expect to be uh, next five. with BIP what? number five, Rafael Vaza from Switzerland. He is 19 years old. He is uh, the youngest snowboarder and uh, won the three-star event in Bruson. So dropping in the young gun from Switzerland with uh, BIP number five. This is the correction we have to do. It's BIP number five. Yeah, he has, for his age, he does have a lot of experience. He has been competing on the juniors for three years already, 19, uh, um, 19 20, and in 21. Um, let's see how he can deal with a big face uh, as the hangar is. He has a 12th place in Nonda at the first final and at the second final, uh, 11th place in Jasna. So uh, his chances are very, very low to get the ticket. I think they're could be a chance with a lot of luck and a first place and Ooh. this is watch out watch out watch out Ooh. hopefully he's okay we see him moving definitely a hard situation as you can see we have such a lot of snow that if you fall head first you get stuck and this is quite a dangerous situation as a snowboarder because uh, you are fixed in your bindings so uh, what's the best technique flow to to then get out of there you know, just stay calm and make sure you have a breathing channel put that snow away from your face and of your mouth and uh, either then slowly start to unbuckle your bindings and dig yourself out or in our case wait for one of the skeeters which are usually with a rider in less than 60 seconds okay so we have ski dudes out there in the face taking the safety part here so they not only help with gear they also are super fast at the rider and can help wherever he's needing help and now right now i can see a ski dude coming from above he will be at rafael in a few seconds help him getting out of the snow Exactly. There's about 10 people up there. We have mountain rescue up there, uh, mountain guides. We have Ms. Max Hitzig, one of the best um, free riders in Austria, sorry, peak valley height for the world tour. And yeah, they're all strategically positioned so they can reach uh, any spot uh, in the face with, uh, in less than 60 seconds. And I think uh, this is really necessary to make a free competition a safe sport. We have a really high level of ski dudes here, as you said. Max Hitzig, he already qualified for the skiing uh, for the free ride world tour because 
he won the event in uh, Nonda, if I'm right, and he won the event also in Jasna, or he got second, I think. So he is already qualified and now helping as a ski dude, so the most professional ski dude in the face. And we see Rafael Vasa, he is back on track. Uh, luckily, we have these security points because uh, I think that's a, that's a big and a great help here. Yeah, I was not too worried about his health because uh, the way he fell, it was his snowboard touching the rock once, um, and he did land half first, but into a big powder pocket. So and the only thing I was worried about if his head was maybe under the snow. But obviously, with the guide um, Mosquito being with him so quick, um, there was no problem to recover him from his uh, hole, and he's uh, up and riding down. Taking it easy, there's an agreement that if a rider has a crash, loses his key or um, has to stop, he should not go for his line anymore and uh, potentially crash again, but just take the easiest way down. And uh, yeah, he's working his way down. He's fine, looking good. So whew, one moment for a deep breath. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're, we're back the at the rider. start gate. <laughs> we're back at the start gate, ladies and gentlemen. We are already with bib number six, Tobias Fieg from Austria. Maybe we can switch it to German for all our German and Austrian uh, visitors in the web in the screen or live here on top at the Hohemut um, restaurant. And uh, yeah, Tobias Fieg, als ich gestern auf seinem Account unterwegs war, mir die letzten Informationen eingeholt habe, habe ich gesehen, dass der Herr gestern Geburtstag gehabt hat. Also alles Gute von unserer Seite. Viel Glück für deinen Run, lieber Tobias. Und äh, was noch ganz interessant ist, der 29-Jährige aus Rohrbe auch in diesem Bereich. Um, Right now, of course, the score very low for the big crash. And uh, now we're back with Tobias Fieg. Tobias Fieg, jetzt im Start geht. Yeah, it's his first full season on the tour. He's the leader of the Austrian ranking. And uh, also has a victory in his pocket. Won the three-star event in Kappel this year. So he's got to be stoked, you know. He got rushed onto the qualifier tour to a sixth and a ninth here yeah, with the big boys. So he can only win whatever he does today. He can be uh, uh, just right, fresh from the heart, without any pressure. I love these drone angles. He's like, we're riding with him. Look at it. So amazing. Shows a fresh approach over this ramp. And I think it's not only good for the riders if they have the drone footage, it's also good for all of us watching the competition because now we realize how many things they see in the face and we also realize that they see actually nothing. They have to orient with the rocks, they have to get their orientation by different spots they're searching and I think that's the, that's the hard game here. I think everyone can ride if he always sees where he is, but it's very, very difficult to do this fluently if you have just the rider's view and he does a really, really good job here with the last cliff and now coming down to the finish area. Enjoying the power here in Gurgel. What a nice event. I think it's the best event of the season, actually, with fresh snow, with nice sunshine, no winds here. And now he's heading with our race drone to the finish area. I think it was very smart riding by, by Toby. He didn't do the most crazy stuff, but was very clean, top to bottom, super fluid. Uh, I think you see a pretty good score for him uh, for this run. Yeah, as we uh, look at our uh, sheets, our cheat sheets, I wanted to say, <laughs> uh, he would need a first place to have chances to get the ticket done for the Free World Tour. Flo, what do you think? Is it is it all right for 80 points? I think uh, Gabriel sitting with 80 points at rank one right uh, now. That's going to be close, but I think we should uh, stick to our credo and not make any point predictions. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to make you making some predictions. I'm sorry. Um, that's the judge's job, actually. We have head judge Dorian Conrad, uh, so they will discuss about the score. They're checking everything in the video replay, as you told me. Uh, so I think it's quite a hard job today at the final. Well, lines like this, if you compare Gabriel Platon's line, who was uh, through the steepest part of the face, maybe a little slower, and with a huge chair at the bottom, very hard to compare with uh, uh, Tobias' run, who chose a more, more mellow area, more mellow line, but rode it definitely faster, and did put some good airs in there. So it's like comparing apples and pears at times, <laughs> and that is the hardest part of, of judges. If all riders would ride the same lines, it would be very easy for the judges. Yeah, just dif make the different nuances, but to compare different lines, different riding styles, that's where it, uh, it's the hard part is. 
comparing apples with pears and not pears, I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> How do you compare an apple with a beer? And now we already get the score for Tobias Feig. That one was missing. Tobias Feig had bib number six. So he's in second place right now. I think everything over over 70, you know, you, you got to be satisfied. And then 80 is where, like, excellent starts. And this guy up in the start gate, he knows what excellent is. Liam Riviera, yeah, from Mexico. Not a typical country for, where your <laughs> free ride stars come from. But he has shown that he's a man who can deal with any conditions. He has amazing freestyle sk skills. He can ride the steeps. His dad always accompanying him. A very nice guy, and he deserves it. He's already qualified for the tour, but still is in the start gate today to give us a good show. I read an article in 2018. He said, my big dream is to ride once at the Freeride World Tour. He already has his ticket, so he's here for a really, really nice run of enjoyment. He said, I want to ride it. If there is good snow, I'm going to ride it. And that's what we see right now. Liam Rivera dropping in with bib number seven and now enjoying the last run or not the last comp from the season. <laughs> the last run, I hope he's going to ride a little bit more this season. Exactly. He is the one who has the least pressure, I think, of all competitors. Or, you know, he has a ticket for the World Tour. To him, it, for him, it's all about this run today, having fun, enjoying the powder and the hunger, and maybe take home some extra cash if he makes it to the podium, which he has multiple times this uh, year already. He's won two four-stars, another second in the four-star, so there was no way past him this season on the snowboard panel. He loves to skateboard, he loves to surf, and that's what he's doing right now. He's surfing the pow here, following the ridge. I think he also wants to keep the snow fresh for all the other riders coming up. So that's a very, really uh, nice line he chose here to enjoy pow, but not destroying any landings or making some new ball pose. And now he's entering the last part of the phase, and you can see the fresh powder. Really, really nice. Yeah. Definitely not the, the Liam Rivera we've seen uh, in the other comps with all the aggression. He's been taking it really easy. Went all the way to the Lucas ride. Had some nice powder turns and last air. But now with his a way down to the finish nice line. Nice butter followed by the yeah. race drone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's on. And uh, one more thing I have to add. I'm getting cooked here at my spot because the sun is right through the window. So I'm feeling like a truck driver getting a sunburn just in the car. Yeah, Chris, unfortunately, you're sitting on the wrong side once again <laughs> of a commentator's truck. <laughs> but I tell you, even here in the shadow, it's uh, getting warm. Not only by the sun, but also by the action of our snowboarders. Ladies and gentlemen, as we wait for the next rider dropping and also for the score from Liam, let's have a look at the next riders coming. So with bib number eight, Hugo Serra from France. And I please say sorry for uh, the names for my expression sometimes with all the different nations i spell them wrong so you all know who is meant hugo Serra from france the actually he started with freestyle snowboard slope style and half pipe and uh, his last freestyle result from a comp is from 2016 i think that's uh, where he switched to free riding and he is 29 years old Exactly. Alors bonjour à tout le monde en France, tous les amis de Hugo Serra, si on dévoile les écrans maintenant aussi. Hugo, yeah, he was on the World Tour last year and just missed the cut to re-qualify, came back to the qualifiers and uh, he has a fourth and a seventh place in his pocket. So if he um, does a podium run today, his chances to go back to the Tour, which he really, really wants to, are still there. So, with a podium today, one score of the finals will be deleted, so it's only two scores out of three final competitions that what we have to say and um, we're excited for the run and as you can see he is pumped with music he's also <laughs> excited standing on the start gate and dropping in in the next five seconds bib number eight Hugo Serra shows us he slumps up high he has a good vibe Hugo all the best for your run Also, he crossing 
on the ridge. Yesterday we heard at the riders meeting that you have to watch out on this ridge. There are a lot of stones and you don't want to fall before dropping in. But he made it to his entry and now heading to the first cliff, landing it perfectly. Yeah, like I said, I was up there this morning uh, to do a forerun and give the riders a condition report. And it's very tricky. Like I was really happy to be in the main part of the face, um, at the very top. Uh, yeah, if you think the riders do ride a bit cautiously, yeah, there's a reason for it. Beautiful riding by Hugo. Very fluid, very clean. That's what it's all about. It's about the creativity of the run and also if it's fluid or not. And then we have the air and style making an overall impression. I think the overall impression for me right now is pretty good. If I look at Liam here, uh, at Hugo, sorry, I'm sorry, at Hugo, I was still at uh, Liam. Yeah, almost a little surprised it didn't show us any of his freestyle skills because I've been riding with him free riding and it's amazing. And a little hump is easy, he does a backflip and he win leap, he goes for a three front side, back side. So um, I was almost thinking he would have put some freestyle moves in his run down today. But nevertheless, very nice and most of all clean run by Hugo. Here we see the nice drone footage from all in the sky with his two bigger drops actually taking it pretty safe for his run. And um, yeah, I'm curious to see how the judges are judging this run and also giving him the points for his run. So excited to see where he's going. Yeah, I think you got to compare his run to uh, Tobias Fick's run, the Austrian, who uh, scored 70.33. Uh, kind of similar runs, and I think the judges are comparing these two right now and uh, make uh, Hugo's score depend on Tobias. Because the way the judging goes, the judging sheets they have, the judges do compare different riders to make sure where it's really close between two to have the right ranking. Okay, now we get um, the score from Hugo, so it's not BIP number two, it's BIP number eight with 74.33 sitting on the second place right now. Yeah, position of just between uh, Gabriel Breton and Hugo Serra on third place. And next one to come is BIP number nine from Switzerland, Florian Bouvier Fournier. And uh, he has uh, 34 years and has a seventh place in Nonda, an eighth place in Jasna. So he really, really needs a top result today to have a chance for the ticket. Yeah, but he has shown this year already how it, how it, how it can work. He won the Nonda three-star event and he's also second in the Swiss ranking 2022. So definitely one of Switzerland's strongest weapons in the men's snowboarding field. Sharing the name Florian with you, so um, I'm excited if we see the same action as we saw from you when you <laughs> ride at the Freeride World Tour. And uh, that's where he wants to go. That's his main goal for the season, getting this first place and also the ticket. And we see a first huge cliff. No, he took it a little bit smaller than I expected. Yeah, we are seeing some of the snowboarders going in the same area, which is kind of obvious. You know, there's always a... Some faces have a certain rhythm, so you line up a certain amount of jumps with a certain amount of distance. And obviously uh, some snowboarders feel the same about this rhythm and choose similar lines. Now caught by a rock, nearly. Yeah, he had a bit of forward lead there, <laughs> but I was worried about him for momentum to go head over heels, but he just managed to, to he stomp managed to it. stomp it yeah. safely. And now he is heading over to the last part, and I think he has something in his pocket to show. Nice, you can see how this laugh management is done by the riders. Perfectly done, and um, I would say definitely a good run. Yeah, once again, similar to the last ones of uh, Hugo and uh, Tobias. And uh, it's amazing, the snow is quality is so good, you know, it really reminds me of a world of shops in Alaska. This lower part of the face is still has a solid 40, 45 degrees. And uh, bam, you can tell how easily the riders stick those landings because of the steepness. What do you think with the, with the sun? We have a north, northeast face. Uh, do you think the sun will affect the snow actually for the riders coming later on? 
I think, if anything, it will only make it better. It's al al already coming almost at a 90 degree angle from the side, and it will be behind the face in, in, yeah. in about two hours. So I think that snow should stay pretty fresh. And if it gets a tiny bit heavier, it's not really a disadvantage for the skier. If anything, it makes it more skiable. Okay, okay. So we're expecting the best of the best conditions here, and that's what we have. And uh, we can see in the finisher, and that's also a very, very nice arrangement that we have a live judging. The riders are staying in the finish area, and right after the category snowman, we will have and we will see who is the winner, who is taking the ticket as well. So that makes it so exciting today because all the riders are down there and super excited for their scores and also for their rankings. And um, yeah, so. Let's check who is coming next on our list here. Yeah, Zodo, Konrad, Head Judge, and uh, Chevy. Shellys. Shellys, thank you very much. Are trying to get those points by 62.67 for Florian Bovier. 62.67. That means if I am right, he would need a first place to get the ticket for the world tour so um, yeah let's see how the other riders are performing and let's look at the start gate with the next rider Alex Rufibach from Switzerland Yeah, Alex, the, he leads the Swiss ranking right now, just ahead of Flo Boyer in the Swiss free ranking. Last year he came fifth overall, so he was only three spots behind qualifying for the Tour. This year it hasn't worked out so well, he sits in 10th place right now. Um, but still a theoretical chance uh, for a win. But I'm pretty sure that Gabriel Platon with his 80 points run uh, <laughs> made it, that did not make it easier for him. That didn't make it easier for him, and we see him riding it. He is 37 years old, coming from the Haslital, from the Berner Oberland, and uh, dropping in also on the Lucas' right side of the face. Yeah, especially for snowboarders, this is a wise choice. It's the, the more playful part of the face. And we have a huge closed zone already in the middle of the face. And to go around that, you have to defy some huge cliffs, which are, to me, more suitable for skiers. So I'm kind of happy the snowboarders, you know, play it smart and then go to that uh, Lucas right side, where they can do very fluid runs, as we have seen uh, so far a couple of. Nice grab here. In a very difficult zone where, the, where you have to stand on your feet, actually. Coming in with a lot of speed here in this yeah, section. I think yeah. it's, the, it's the fastest rider we had here in this section. And going down the huge cliff, stomping it perfectly. And now coming to the enjoyable zone, let's say, <laughs> where we saw the no sputtering from the snowboarders before. And that's... Look, look at this view right now. Perfect powder, a few lines coming down. And this is the highlight of his run. Yeah, tough, tough one for the judges here as well. Very similar lines to two or three other riders. Um, maybe one, one ALS than, for example, Hugo, but therefore a little more speed. Wow. <laughs> but he can be stoked. It was very clean. And he seems happy too. Flo, you hiked up today. How long is the hike up to the face, up to the start gate? Uh, it's about uh, 40, 45 minutes. And uh, yeah, but you want to make sure you have done your line check before because when you're up there, you don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> so line checking and also line choice has to be done before. And then it's a 45 minutes walk. So actually also for the riders, it's not easy. If you have walked for 45 minutes, if you take it too fast, maybe already some energy burned in your legs. And uh, you have to keep a lot of energy for the run right now to play it safe and also to keep the action high. That's true, you know, but uh, all of those riders, you know, they live and breathe free riding, so they're out uh, in the free, in the, in the mountains 60 all winter long. points for Alex Rufibach. Putting him in eighth place right now. And Gabriel Platon sitting pretty strong in that hot seat with his 80 points, as we have only three riders to go. We still have Enzo Niele from France, David Pickel from Austria, and Cedric Giraudot also from France. And the next one, Enzo, he came so close to qualifying last year, sits in fifth place this year, but he has a second place from Jasna from the last comp. So if he does a good result now, he can still challenge Gabriel Platon for this last ticket, which is still available for the World Tour.
Nilo Enzo has a few chances. He has to score at least a fifth place to keep the chance of getting the World Tour ticket. And uh, he is now ready in the start gate, dropping in with pip number 11, the guy from France with 28 years. And he knows exactly what it's like to win because he has won two four stars already this season. And last year he came so close, he was second overall in the qualifier ranking. So just missed the qualification to the tour by one single spot. So he's very eager. You know, Good friend from Victor De La Rue as well. As I saw, they're always together at some contest filming each other. Um, I think also in Jasna, Victor filmed for him because he showed the run on Instagram. And uh, now he is also heading to the right side. I think that's a, a pretty good decision for all of the snowboarders, as you said. Yeah, and I like this top approach. He was definitely the fastest snowboarder so far at the top area. And I like this top approach. Perfectly executed. It's so deep, like you have to be so careful not to get stuck into a front roll in the snow. Now getting some awesome view from the race drone. Yeah. I think even as a rider it's, it's, it's quite complicated if you hear the drone following you. But uh, I think you're that much in the tunnel that you would not realize. I like tell you, you, I don't even hear a helicopter when you are riding a competition, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Yeah, taking the last drop super fast and again ending up in this uh, playful area before the finish line and now enjoying the last few turns. Actually, the, the upper part, the super nice cliff he did, then very fluently through this section and as an exit, he took the cliff at the highest spot we saw right, right now. Yeah. So um, should be a good score as a sweep. Yeah. Whew, am I leaning out the window really far if I'm saying I don't think he will challenge the 80 points of, of Gabriel, but he can definitely get close to that. Don't make any assumptions, <laughs> Flo, even if we drive. Uh, actually, you have, to, you have to think that we are so professional watching every contest from our cabin here. But um, yeah, better to don't make any predictions, better to watch how the judges are deciding here in this case. And um, especially excited for Nilo right now. Yeah, what I mean, do you think? What are the thoughts if you're standing in the finish area? Well, you know, I'm pretty sure that the riders today, they're not thinking um, during their run about that overall uh, ranking. You know, you can't. You just want to focus on every single turn, every single air, on finding your line and staying on your feet uh, on the drops. And then only after the last drop, if you like approach your finish line, you might kind of wake up from that. And um, I think about rankings, but not before that. Actually, right now, I'm uh, super sorry because yesterday we got some special information from Gabriel Bleton uh, with BIP number two. He told us that he's riding a special board made all in wood and it's handmade by uh, Jules, I think. So he really wants to thank him for his nice board he always gets. He just asked us yesterday to have a special announcement. So BIP number two, Gabriel Bleton, thanks for your comment on this side and I'm Happy to see that your 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 board is working. Exactly, uh, Julien Lezac made those boards for him, and uh, yeah, it was definitely so far the board of the day that <laughs> got him down safely and uh, and gave him a clean landing on one of the biggest or deep biggest cliff of the day for snowboarders. Yeah, in the beginning, in the beginning, we really thought uh, starting the run really hard with a with a small, let's say not a, not a crash, but laying back into the snow, and that finishing up uh, with 80 points is uh, pretty pretty awesome, I would say. Oh yeah, his score would have been uh, between 85 and 90, and so they definitely had to um, take off some points for that mistake at the top. But it was a minor mistake, so I think uh, this definitely justifies uh, the score he got. And now I don't want to be a judge. I don't want to sit in their position judging the scores for Enzo Nilo. And uh, that's why he's waiting with a lot of excitement here for his points, <laughs> waving one time with his arm without uh, understanding the time. But um, it has to take time because they have to do the best of the best jobs here. They are deciding who is going to win the competition and also who is going to the Freeboard World Tour next year. And we got the score with 72.67. And I do the math here and that puts uh, Enzo in third place right now. Wow, just behind Hugo Serra and Gabriel Peton. Yeah, contrary to us who are talking pretty much non-stock and being super excited at the judges' booth, it's 
quiet. You know, the judges of they focus uh, on the runs of the riders. They see their body language. They kind of can tell what's going on, and that's why they, I would say, always come up with the right scores. And next one is pip number 12, David Pickel von Österreich. Wir switchen wieder in die deutsche Sprache und schauen uns David Pickel an, wie er seinen Run startet. Von oben am Hangarer, 24 Jahre alt, hat einen fünften Platz in Nonda, einen uh, Did Not Start in Jasna, weil dort war er unterwegs mit dem uh, Snowboard Cross. Genau, der David ist unglaublich. Er studiert nicht nur Physik in Innsbruck, sondern äh, ist gleichzeitig at the same time competitor in uh, at the Free World Qualifiers and also at the Border Cross Europe and World Cup. And he had the World Cup final um, in Besona, so he couldn't come to Jasna. That means he has only one result so far in the qualifier finals. Und als Border Crosser weiß man natürlich, wie man mit dem Snowboard unterwegs ist. Die sind schnell, die sind meistens zu viert unterwegs auf der Piste. Jetzt darf er sich den Hang allein geben und wir sehen, er genießt es hier im Powder, macht seine Schwünge, ist vorher schon durch eine, sagen wir jetzt mal, relativ schwierige äh, Situation durch und jetzt wird es dann Zeit für die Air and Style Action. Jawohl, zeigt er einen Dreier, relativ smart gemacht, mit wenig Geschwindigkeit. Und das nächste Cliff, ich glaube, ganz, ganz wichtig, jetzt im unteren Part, safe, alles landen, auf den Beinen rausfahren und ja, hat er ein Safety 180 eingebaut, kleine Hesitation wahrscheinlich. Ja, yeah, that was a little bit weird, that last year i wasn't sure was it a 180 or was it just a 90 but he did stay on his feet that's for sure david pickel und jetzt bringen wir ihn die letzten meter runter ins ziel gemeinsam grüße gehen natürlich auch an alle mitfieberer und mitfieberinnen da draußen die jetzt vorm screen sitzen und sagen david ist safe im ziel unten gelandet und er ist schon der vorletzte der kategorie und ähm, ja bevor ich jetzt irgendwelche voreiligen entscheidungen mache we have immer noch Gabriel Breton sitting on the first rank right now and if he is scoring first or second and that's the big thing he will get the ticket for the Fiat World Tour. So if David right now does not get a score higher than 80 then we do have the first ticket that we give for the World Tour 2023, right? Uh, I would say right because uh, I really want to wait on the judges <laughs> and I really want to wait on the Freeroad World Tour to accept the scores here. But um, yeah, in calculations, I would say if David is lower score than Gabriel and that's how it is, judges saw a crash here, I think. They saw a crash in the last cri uh, cliff, I'm pretty sure, because that reduces his score to 55.33 it was. Nevertheless, a big shout out to David and also his dad, who was one of uh, the world's best uh, alpine racers in the, in the 80s, Richard Pickel. Richard, big shout out to you as well. And David, keep going as strong next year and even better. As we go to our very last competitor in the snowman category of the day, Cedric Girodeau. Cedric Girodeau, the guy, 31 years old. Uh, he is also competing in sandboarding, I saw on his social media channels. So he's a professional sandboarder and now heading for the deep powder. Yeah, it's his ninth season on the qualifiers. Uh, ranked 12 right now in, the, in this qualifier ranking. So not um, his most successful season, but maybe his most successful competition of the year. Yeah, riding nine seasons qualifier. So he knows Whoa. what to do and he knows how to do it. And he knows how to <laughs> land big cliffs. What a big cliff. We never saw such a big cliff for the first riders right now. Huh? The judges will love it because the same air was cliff was taken by at least four or five riders, but off the side and it just went right over it. And also here, super sizing speed and cliff size. Very solid run by Cedric so far. Wow, keep going, buddy. Cedric firing it up, telling Gabriel to wait until his run is finished because he didn't want to see him on the first place. He wants, oh, oh. all the way ah. full speed to the very last year. We get a little sideways and hung up. 
and potentially mm, puts his back down a for a second. Pity ah. for the 31 year old rider. The last air had a little bit of hesitation, and now it's on the judges to decide how they're gonna Look put at this the replay. Score. I love this run. He, like his body language from the very top was like in full charging mode, and here is this little speed wobble. Speed wobbledy oh. doddledy <laughs> and uh, speeding over it. Now he's in the finish area, so nothing to change here. And uh, he getting the props from Hugo. They all know each other, they all celebrate together, they all uh, watch the face together, talk about their lines. It's like a family yesterday at the dinner. Uh, we really realized that it's, it's the, the whole freeride family was there and was excited talking about different lines, different options. So very, very nice to see and uh, also nice to watch. So if you're here once and uh, watch one of the qualifier contests, you will get the emotions being here around and all the people having a big smile after the run. Well, Google is the freeride paradise. If you look at all the other mountains around us, it's just amazing powder tracks. There was no powder snow in Austria for four weeks, six weeks. Now it's here, so come to Google and slash some power. We had summer already in March and then switched on for the last final to get some new snow. And um, yeah, let's see what's coming in April. Well, it was like minus 12 degrees this morning, so definitely very wintry. Yeah. Now it is heating up. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see here, I'm totally... Uh, <laughs> in the sun, Flo has the safe spot here next to me, but um, actually I can open the window, get some fresh air, and uh, maybe after the half I would need some sun cream. So ladies and gentlemen, we are just about to crown a winner in the snowboard man category of the four-star Google Freeride World Qualifier. Last event of the season, we're just waiting for the last score for Cedric Giraudoux. So we are waiting for the last score, then we have the flower ceremony, so uh, the winners are crowned right there in the finish area. And uh, we also know and we also get the information from the Freeride World Tour who is getting the ticket. And um, if we follow our calculations, this is going to be a win for Gabriel Breton and also the ticket for him. But let's see how the big deciders here from the Freeride World Tour decide. Sixty-nine thirty-three. the score for Cedric, and that means he will be settling on sixth place. And uh, we have a winner, and it is Gabriel Pleton ahead of Hugo Serra and Enzo Nilo. So we are waiting for the official result list. Here it is, and here we see the winners from today. On first place, Gabriel Pleton. Second place, Hugo Serra, and third place, Enzo Nilo. And when I look at my calculations screen, at my predictions sheet, I can tell you that we're going to have a free ride World Tour ticket and the one and only slot goes to Gabriel Bleton. And this guy will be fired up down in the finish area. Flo is laughing. I think you have... Yeah. I think he deserves it. You no, know, there's no better way to... He was the only one in the field who could... Uh, secure a ticket to the World Tour with a win or a second place and he won it um, by a solid instance of uh, almost six points to the second Hugo Serra. So I think there's no question who deserves this ticket um, for next year. Congratulations, Gabriel. I'm very stoked for you. Nice to see you, Flo, next to me with your with goosebumps because you're so excited for the young riders taking the ticket. You rode 17 years on the Freeride World Tour and that's their dream. And here we can see the winners. The crowned winners of the first category, Snowboard Men. What a big action here in Gurgel. And uh, here we can see the freshly shaped board for the contest. Big ups to his friend making the snowboards. And now it's official, ladies and gentlemen. We have two qualified athletes for the Snowboard Men category. Freeride World Tour 2023. And it's... Congratulations to Gabriel Bleton and Lia... Rivera. Liam Woo! Rivera from Mexico. Congratulations, guys. See you next year on the in the Champions League. In the exactly. biggest league of free riding. That's where everyone wants to go once in his life. And uh, we are super stoked. The contest is officially 
opened but, with the first category. But let's not forget Tobias Fieg, pretty stoked for him, a fourth place. That means he did put down a, a ninth, a sixth and a fourth overall um, in the in the, in the free finals. And it's very promising for next year where he will battle it out again for a ticket. Because he wants more Austrians on the tour again. Let's have a look at the start list for the snowboard women. In the snowboard women category, we also have one more slot to be given away. And it's altogether, it's eight riders coming from eight different nations. So I'm pretty stoked that we have such a lot of different riders from the different nations here. Starting with Selina Weber from Germany, Michaela Holstein from Finland, Anna Orlova sitting on the first place right now in the furnace from Russia, Claire McGregor. Charging on the third place right now from New Zealand, Sarah Andresen from Switzerland, Sarka Pankochova from Czech Republic and Rizzolio Estelle from France and Sarah Bacher from Austria. And a very interesting constellation here. Constellation here. Anna Olova, Ezzel Rizzolo and Claire McGregor. These three girls sit in the, ra in the ranking on one, two, three and either one of them will get the ticket to the tour if she wins. So we have three <laughs> girls uh, making, let's say, making the final, a final today. It's between Anna Orlova, Estelle Rizzolio and Claire McGregor. And uh, at the dining table yesterday evening, they were talking about lines and line choices. And I'm pretty excited to see the girls starting right now with Pip number 14, Selina Weber aus Deutschland. Auch an alle Zuseher aus Deutschland. Herzlich willkommen beim Vier Star Final hier in, in Gurgel und äh, wir schauen uns an, was die Selina ausgesucht hat, welche Linie sie heute den Berg hinunterzeichnet, welche Spur ganz frisch hier in den Tiefschnee gezeichnet yeah, wird. Together with Sarah Bacher, she is the youngest on the tour with 20 years, 22 years old and it's her first season only a tour, but put in straight away eight events, so a lot of comps this year. And uh, she actually won a three star in Brazil and was second and fourth in Verbier, so she had some success this season. And very good for a first unit two, I must say. Ja, Selina Weber, wenn ich richtig liege, wohnt sie derzeit in Innsbruck und äh, liebt natürlich das Abenteuer rundherum, klettert sehr viel und äh, jetzt ist sie auch schon mitten im Face drinnen und ich glaube, es ist Zeit, für die Action auch sie wählt die bekannte Rinne, die wir auch schon von einigen Männern gesehen haben. Wow, ist damit viel Speed hinein und jetzt aufpassen, stehen bleiben, bitte, 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 bitte. Ja, ja wir also bekommen das Zeichen, sie ist okay. Uh, das off offizielle Zeichen, if you wave your arms, you show that you are okay and we are happy that she is okay. It's not easy to crash here because we have a lot of rocks hidden under the snow, so, um, yeah. I really liked her run up to the point, like the top air she had was really fast and fluid and then uh, went into the gully as well. Maybe it's a little bit too speed, uh, too fast to handle its speed, but uh, yeah, I'm not worried about her being injured because she, she kind of rolled over those rocks and uh, had no major impact. Obviously, after a crash like this, all your body tension is gone and your mindset is not the same. So better take it easy. Just bring it home, cruise down safely and uh, not risk too much anymore. Yeah, and if you, and if you, if you fall once, it's also easy to keep the orientation because you're tumbling. You don't know where you go. And um, that's hard, I think, after a crash to really get the control back, breathe one or two times and then hit back to the finish area and relax, enjoy in the sun and celebrate with the other World Tour Qualifier riders. Yeah, I really liked her top airs, like very motivated, you know, not hardly slowing down before the airs and just losing the edge and tumbling over those two cliff bands. Whew, Never nice to see a crash here in the cabin. It's getting <laughs> warmer than it is before. So happy that she is well down in the finish area and now we see the score it's a score of 10 obviously because of that hard crash and uh, we're looking up to the start gate up to pip number 15 which is Michaela Holsten from Finland she is 33 years old and loves to travel born on the Finnish islands and um, I'm pretty stoked to see her run today 
Yeah, she's been coming so close to qualify. She was third, fourth, and fifth in the overall ranking last year. Just over a few spots behind um, the ranking where you get a ticket for the tour. But she's been competing for 11 years, so a lot of experience uh, in her. And she's always motivated, always smiling. I liked it about Michaela. Number 15, Michaela is dropping in. 3, 2, 1, drop in. So, now we see the snowboard women category. Michaela Holsten, second rider from the day. And also, her run is plant on the right side of the face where the snow is fresh, where the powder is super fresh and you have some really nice opportunities for some air and style in the bottom part. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of uh, Finnish riders anymore in the last years. So when I was uh, actively competing, there was always a few, a few amazing guys, like Jarko Hentonen, who uh, was riding the steepest ice coolers in, in Chamonix, or Ode Sivonen. I really hope uh, we'll see some, some young, more young riders uh, from Finland in the next couple of years. Playing it smart in the upper part right now. I think she has some plans to do a cliff here and we will see her drop right now, taking it as a double. Very well executed. Very well executed from the young rider here. Yeah, beautiful combo. Uh, not a very fast run, but very steady, just keeping her, uh, her speed constant and just... Uh, you're collecting points. Not a nice cliff by Michaela. Got a little hung up, but no major mistake. And we're in for one last feature before the straight out at the bottom. And this is a huge feature. She's taking it the same way as you did in the early morning run, Flo. So maybe she saw that it's a really nice landing and now finishing up in the soft part. And if we look outside, that's the best of a few you can have <laughs> on a Monday morning. Uh, greetings go out to all of the people sitting in the office watching the Freeway World Tour Qualifier four stars. I'm happy to have you here in the live stream and I'm happy to report with Flo Orly together the most important results, technical issues around the comp. Yes, yeah, we see Michaela Holstein go through the finish and also we see Gabriel Bleton just right next to a truck with a big smile on his face <laughs> and celebrating um, his day, his victories. As we're waiting for Michaela's course. Congratulations for all of the people going down the Hangara. It's such a hard face. If you stand on the top, you see nothing. And nothing means really nothing. And just if you start moving, you can see some of the rocks, you can see some of the landings, but in general, it's everything blind and that makes it so difficult here. And we get the score for Michaela Holsten with pip number 15, ladies and gentlemen. 68-67 for Michaela as we move up to the start and now ladies and gentlemen these are the deciding moments of this year Free World World Qualifier Series. Anna Oliver, a former World Tour rider, she was third on the Free World Tour in 2019 and she's back on the qualifiers to re-qualify. With a first place she will have the ticket secured with a second, third, fourth or whatever place we have to wait for all the riders. We're gonna see how she is performing, having some hesitations on top, but um, uh, maybe if we are lucky, the judges didn't see that. I'm pretty sure they did because they <laughs> see everything. She had her, her, her back down there for a second, but not a major mistake. Probably like a three or four point deduction. Um, the question is if it's going to play her mind a little bit. It's kind of can take your concentration away very easily if you have a mistake at the top. Bam! But stopping this air, beautiful. I think she's still fully in the mode. So I'm personally switching from our screen up to 
the reality and just look up the mountain and see her coming down between those cliffs. That was an amazing view and this amazing snow today. Anna Orlova, the Russian superstar in social media. She is like a superstar. She is a vice freeride world tour champ in 2019. She loves the trail running to keep her fit during the summer and that's the legs what you need for this phase for stomping such high cliffs and for getting the control of your board here on the Hangara which is a very very steep phase. Flo actually how steep are the steepest parts here on the Hangara? Let me watch this for a second her last year beautifully stumped who just came a little short <sighs> good run by Anna Obola yeah not as crazy as other ones we've seen yeah but uh but very solid the hangar just uh, has an average steepness of 40 45 degrees all the way top to bottom and then you have those cliffs which obviously go vertical that's why it's so hard uh, orientation wise and now look at this last cliff from anna orlova heading now to the finish area actually she doesn't seem to be that stoked about her run because of the mistake on the upper part and also she had to to stop in the middle of the face let's see how the judges are judging for her points wow exciting moments 63.67 for Anna and there's one thing now she cannot secure a ticket to the world to buy her own means anymore today because she wouldn't have, have needed a victory but still a solid score and we'll see what our next rider Claire McGregor her direct um, competitor has to say about that Claire McGregor 32 years of age with a sixth place in Nonda and a first place in Jasna so uh, Claire can really score the 5,000 points, which is the maximum, with two wins out of three competitions. One result is deleted for you, ladies and gentlemen. Again, we have three finals. Now is the last final. That counts. Two scores out of these three finals count for the riders, and every one of the riders wants to get the ticket for the Freeride World Tour, and that's why it's so exciting here in Gurgel at the Hangara contest and I can think what's going on in her head right now. Well, Claire had a big crash here on this, uh, on this mountain, the Hangara, about five years ago. She rode off the start gate to her first little air and uh, landed with her head on a rock, had to be evacuated by the helicopter. I went to see her in the hospital um, on the day after and she said the toughest uh, moments for her today are going to be just right out of the start gate till her, to, for her first turns. But I think she's past it now. and. Uh, and how she can uh, enjoy the rest of her run. A really hard crash from her seven years ago. She told us yesterday another time and now she did the traverse and dropping in for her run, fully concentrated and we are fully excited. She's one of the few riders here who can, who is coming fresh from the World Tour. She was competing on a tour last year um, and this year, but the eighth place in the final ranking of the World Tour meant she had to go back to the qualifiers. But uh, yeah, did a great job st straight away by winning in Jasna and having a sixth place in, uh, in Nanda. So with a good result today, she'll be right back on the tour without an interruption. Claire McGregor, the DJ from Verbi, La Fournier. She is a DJ making the people hot in the evening and now she's getting hot for her first drop. We saw with a little hesitation, little bit back seat, how, we, how you call it? A Definitely, yeah, a back slap, as you call it. Um, the snow up there on the ridge, as we can see right now, and she's just dodging a little rock, is, uh, is much more tricky than in the face. Uh, it has fallen very lightly uh, over the last two days uh, without any wind, really. And uh, this very light snow just covers some rocks, so at the ridge, it's very tricky. Now taking a double. A beautiful double. Beautiful executed. And now for her final cliff, and straighten it out to the finish line that with a, a lot of stump. speed. <laughs> that was a solid stump from Claire McGregor. And as she knows in her head, she needs a very, very good result to beat at least Anna Orlova and get the one open ticket for the Freeride World Tour. So she had a couple of really nice moments in run, but also as you see at the bottom, a couple of stops and um, 
and back slap, so a very hard one for the judges. Just like Anna had not a perfect run, but uh, whew, a tough one. I, w I would dare to say <laughs> what what uh, what the course is going to be. A tough one. Flo is uh, smiling over his whole face, watching the snowboard action right now, and um, we are pretty excited to see the scores right now. We are waiting. We can only wait as the riders in the rider finish area. But you see her smiling, and always that's a good sign. Claire McGregor coming in with 57.33 points. Which does put her right behind Anna Oliver at this moment. If Anna is in front <laughs> of Claire. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, 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 we don't start, we we don't start <laughs> exactly. calculating anything. We are watching back to the top Sarah exactly. Ann Dresner with bib number 18, the young Swiss rider. She's super strong. Um, as I know, Sarah Ann Dresner, she she's a doctor, actually. She and she, she uh, was on the podium with third place at the first event of the qualifiers in Londa, but they couldn't take part in the second one in Yasa because she had to work. And she, and she wants to give a big shout out to all her colleagues because it's her first year working full time as a doctor and all her colleagues always have to shift uh, um, their working time around so she can have time off for the comps. She's a big shout out, she says, please to all her doctor friends. At <laughs> so shout outs to all her doctor friends taking her part, her job part today because she has to compete here in the Freeride World to qualify a four star finals. And uh, that's where she is right now, directly in the face on the middle part. And she's not traversing to the very right. 68.67, the score to beat right now, with Michaela sitting in first at this moment. Nice for that overview, ladies and gentlemen. You can see on the right side, first to fourth place. On first place, Michaela Holsten. And I like her riding so far. Very, very fluid. I'd say a tick faster than most other of uh, female snowboarders so far. She did put in one nice air at the top. Here's the second one. Very smooth. Very smooth so far. Yes, taking a nice drop here. Having her board directly under control again and heading to another cliff Ooh. now, speeding wow. it out. Turning it into a double, to me, by far the most complete run of the snowball goes so far. Oh. Fast, clean, and then. No. Oh, why did I say anything? No. Oh. It's always the same flow. Oh. If we start in the so cabin, I'm sorry. To <laughs> tell congratulations <laughs> to the riders. It's. Incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, you that stop was concentration the winning time. run so far. What happened right there? The cross got her. Just yeah. got caught with the front side of the board, with the nose, and then <laughs> doing a Putzelbaum, as we call it, <laughs> in Austria. And uh, what a pity for the young snowboarder. Oh. Well, after doing the face check in the morning, we warned the riders that at the bottom, the snake changes as soon as you... Uh, land your last cliffs and it gets flat. There is a big crust in the bottom part, and uh, that's what got her. And she's gonna be oh, devastated. She, to me, it was the winning run for sure until this, until this very moment. Oh, Sarah. Nevertheless, she showed some amazing skills. I really liked it. Run fluid, fast, and she did uh, stick all her runs, uh, all her cliffs very, very well. Congratulations, Sarah. No matter what the score is gonna be now, after your brutal bomb at the bottom. Purtling at the bottom, now having 42.00 points. Sarah Andresen, we are happy to have you here in the Finnish area. And we we'll definitely see you the next years on competition. And in between, you will be working as a doctor. Much fun and thanks again to her colleagues. We're looking back to the start gate. We are directly within the last three riders here at the Hangara face with pip number 19, Sarka Pankochova from Czech Republic, 30 years old, has an eighth place in Nonda, a seventh place in Jasna, and is now starting her run. 
Yeah, she was a late starter, so to say. Uh, she only uh, started last year um, with her qualifier or her competition career at the age of 29. It's so only her second season and still lots of experience to be made. Uh, a lot of time, I'd say, to collect experience on the competition scene. I just realized we have the most international uh, field of all categories in the snowboard girls. Because we have girls from Germany, Finland, Russia, New Zealand, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, Fla France and Austria. That's pretty amazing. We have eight riders, eight Oof. girls starting and eight nations. And there was a small mistake after the first drop here. Yeah, pretty solid drop by Sarah. Not putting it to her feet completely, but... That means we can probably expect more in that lower part. And if we see the view here from the camera, all the pictures, it looks pretty and a lot easier than it is. Please stop, 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 stop. Another hesitation. And that's what I wanted to say. It's not the same as the rider is seeing on his run. He can just see the white snow and no landings because the face is rolling down. And that's the hard thing. Keeping the orientation, keeping the concentration, being super nervous from the start gate, then finding into the tunnel again. And she's showing a nice drop at the end, saying thank you to have having her here. Thank you to have you in the finish line. And oh. ah, she got caught maybe from, from, from a small rock on top. It looked like an unintentional front flip. Yeah, pretty engaged, motivated run, unfortunately, with a couple of mistakes on the way down for Sarah. Yeah, but once there is the Wurm drin, there is the Wurm drin, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, but I like her approach. She, she's a girl <laughs> that always goes big. Angie is still happy, still celebrating on the bottom. The girls support each other, and that's the best pictures we want to see. Here down happy faces full of snow face shots from the fresh powder and the sun is shining thanks Google and thanks to the Hangara for the action we are having right now let's have a look we have the score from Sarka Pankochova with 15.00 of course that's because of the crashes we saw right now and, and two riders to go. Right now, Michaela Holsten leads ahead of Anna Oliver and Claire McGregor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seat belts exactly. once again. She is placed in second right now. Rizzolio Estelle from France. She needs definitely a top, top result. And I would say that's possible for her we have Michaela sitting with 68.67 points on the first place right now and I think that's a score possible to beat yeah Estelle has been spoiled this year she finished second twice on the qualifier final she won another two fourth day events in Montefone and Verbier so two first two second on fourth day events that's pretty much the, um, the strongest we've seen for, of any girl this year and look where she's and going and she's entering the NAR wow Makes I me hope if that's this is on where her she plan. To go. Now straighten it out with a lot of control coming <laughs> here inside. <laughs> the way of sketchiness, but she's riding it super easy. Wow, yeah. I... Taking a drop and now heading to the right side. <laughs> so she definitely wanted to go there, just had a hard here time we have the, into that zone. The, the small red zone on the lower part, so she has to cross it on the right side. That's how she's doing it. And now she's so pumped from the super starting in the NAR. Now heading over to some smaller cliffs, I would say. But definitely something in her pocket to show. No, she's taking the big one. Come, come, land it. Yes. 
<laughs> Very well executed. My excitement level is now definitely 120%. And it's all about this last one. And now heading to the finish area. She got lost from the camera. That doesn't matter because we can watch her riding down the last meters. And that's super important to stay with a lot of concentration here. We saw it with Sarah. Uh, it can happen everywhere. And now look at these highlights. Definitely a really solid run from the snowboard girl here. For sure, yeah, Estelle really has uh, stomping legs, as we call them, in free riding. Wow. Stompy legs from bib number 20. The French snowboard girl. And now it's all about the judges to decide which score she's going to take. No assumptions. <laughs> I see Flo is already calculating in his head, but no, we are no. waiting for the score. No assumptions, but I would say it was the most engaged run. She took the most gnarly line. That entry up there was really... Really crazy, and she had to look for uh, for the, for a clean entry for a second or two. She had to stop, but then just uh, made um, made up for that with a lot of speed afterwards. And she had a long traverse at the bottom, but she knew why she wanted to go to those two big cliffs and uh, to stump both of them. Sixty points for 60 Estelle Risorio. Sixty points for Estelle. So the judges saw a hesitation somewhere. Sixty. Points. Wow, but before we get into any calculation, I think we should focus on our next rider, which is our Austrian competitor. Wir begrüßen nochmal alle Österreicher, die jetzt vor dem Screen sitzen und sagen, Sarah Bacher, viel, viel Glück. Auch wir wünschen dir viel Glück auf deinem Run. Besser gesagt, viel Spaß, weil es ist eine Ehre, hier hinunterfahren zu dürfen. Eine Ehre, bei den Freeride World to Call Finals dabei zu sein oder dabei sein zu dürfen in dem Fall. Und äh, wir sind sehr gespannt auf deinen Run. Sarah Bacher, die 20-Jährige, die mit Snowboard Cross angefangen hat. Ihre Mutter war eine Snowboardlehrerin. Sie liebt das Mountainbiken. Und jetzt steht sie bei ihrem Lieblingssport, dem Freeriden, ganz oben. Ist gepumpt voller Adrenalin, voller Energie und begibt sich jetzt in den Tunnel des Freeridens. Yeah, it's only her second uh, season on the qualifiers and she's already sitting in fifth place. So not a bad start for Sarah, uh, being the youngest competitor of all with her 20 years. And off we go. Have a good one, Sarah. Yes, yeah, so I just saw her riding a week ago at the Kitzsteinhorn three-star world qualifier where she had a very spectacular run that ended in a <laughs> even more spectacular crest just before the finish line. So she said what she's trying today is not to do that again and just have a good run top to bottom. At bottom means actually the finishing arch. Nice and fluid upper part so far. No, no hesitation, no slowdowns, no stops, no mistakes. Um, what she needs now is to line up some airs to uh, get this run really spectacular. Ja, Flo, wie du heute runtergekommen bist nach deinem ersten Run, nach deinem ersten Vorrun, hast du zu mir gemeint, es wird tricky für die Snowboarder, sehr wechselnde Conditions, teilweise sehr viel Schnee, teilweise etwas weniger Schnee, dann sind doch ein, zwei kleine Rutscher drinnen und natürlich auch die Steine, nicht zu vergessen die sogenannten Sharks, wie, wie wir sie beim Freeriden nennen, die da vom Schnee bedeckt werden und jetzt wird sie aber schnell, die Dame aus Österreich. Hat es dann nochmal unter Kontrolle bekommen? Yeah, a lot of speed after that first air. And I think she had to shut it down to like an emergency stop not, in order not to run to the next one. Oh, and then she landed like right into the landing bump hole of another rider and then drifted onto a rock. So not a clean landing on that last air. Aber auch sie kommt hinunter in die Finish-Area, während wir uns nochmal die Highlights ihres Runs anschauen. Ich glaube, das war der Part oben. Ja. Super schnell unterwegs und dann ist doch wieder sehr viel Schnee unterhalb vom Fürsten, der sie dann halt dann wirklich wieder äh, fängt an der Frontside-Kante, wie auch immer. 
und äh, nicht einfach hier zu fahren und deswegen äh, Hut ab an alle Damen, Herren, Jungs und Mädels, die sich da den Hangarer hinunterkämpfen. Und wer jetzt gerade eingeschaltet hat, ihr seid live dabei. Herzlich willkommen beim Vier-Stern-Event hier in Gurgel. Wir sind bereits am Ende der ersten zwei Kategorien. Snowboard Herren haben wir bereits gekürt. And this is the final of the Snowboard Women with the last rider. And uh, not BIP number six, but the... Seven, eight rider in the snowboard category women. Sarah Bacher is now waiting for her score down in the finish area. And we will check who is sitting on first, sitting on second and sitting on third. And who is getting the only ticket for the free ride world tour category snowboard women. Yeah, 40 points for Sarah that she put in seventh place. And that means that Michaela Holstein with her 68.67 should be our winner of the day. Michaela Holsten is the winner of the day, but is it enough to take the ticket? I don't think so, because Anna Orlova is sitting on second, making her 4,400 points. I'm super excited to see the final results getting from the Free World Tour. Congratulations to our three golden girls. Here we have them in the picture, down in the finish area. It's time to celebrate, it's time to smile, and it's time for some nice friendship time. And we can hear them shouting from the finish area and all the people watching up in the restaurants, in the offices. We have the ticket for the Free Ride World Tour and now it's official. Anna Orlova <laughs> will join the World Tour here. She with her second place in Gurgel and you can see how much pressure is on this girl. She really wants to ride in the World Tour and now she got the ticket. Congratulations to our Russian freeride superstar. That is one stoked girl, huh? <laughs> Beautiful. Congratulations, Anna. <laughs> Big relief. You can tell well, just looking at her. Wow. Big relief and... Uh, Big goosebumps here in our cabin if we see the girls celebrating each other. But it's not done yet, ladies and gentlemen. It's not done yet. And we are heading over to the skiing category. And uh, for the skiing category, we have as well one slot for giveaway for the Free Ride World Tour. And um, yeah, eight riders, five nations. And um, yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah, actually, we have two spots for the oh, girls. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm well, sorry. There was one for the snowboard girls, but we have two for the skier girls. And, uh, yeah, there's still um, a lot that can actually make it. Mejan Petor, Astrid Julis, Manon Loshi, and Jenna Keller, they can all go right to the World Tour if they win this event today. So, it's a very open category. Now we look at the start Starting list for today, Caroline Stromberg from Sweden, followed by Eva Patola from Swiss, Megan Beton, Elisabeth Marina, Jenna Keller, Astrid Chelui, Ch Chelus? Chelui? I'm sorry, <laughs> please excuse my spelling, Petra Olsen and Manon Loshi. I think you can read the names, you already know the names, it's the big stars from the European region, the best freeriders here. Uh, in Gurgel and um, yeah, we are ready for the drop-in waiting for BIP number 22, Caroline Stromberg and she's already on top here you can see our cabin we're directly on the bottom of the face next to us is the finish area all the riders are coming up that's why we're watching all the faces all the happy faces here in Gurgel and uh, yeah, I would say best conditions of 2022 Exactly. The, the riders have had a hard winter competition-wise because a lot of times uh, the, the snow was just not, you know, um, was not perfect, let's put it like this. The snow wasn't perfect. Now Mother Nature spent us some fresh snow, 40 centimeters here. And uh, it's not super easy to ride because there are some hidden rocks, some hidden stones. But we have the best of the best riders here. So they're going to know their line. They're going to have their orientation. And now it's time to drop in in the skiing category women. 
Yeah, Caroline Stromberg. She's the oldest of the category, 34 years old, with a lot of experience. 10 contest season under, already under her belly. And last year she was third on the qualifiers ranking. I mean, she missed the qualification just by one spot. This year she sits in 11th, so she doesn't have a chance to qualify anymore, but she has a chance for a victory today on the Hangar Mountain. And taking the win here is also a really, really great honor if you're sitting on the first spot. Everyone is looking at you, everyone knows how strong you have to be in riding to take the win here. And that's how it looks like she's riding super strong. Very different to see the skiers right now after the snowboarders. And um, ah, here she has Anna. some problems. But she can continue her run. And Flo next to me, he is trying to get Anna Orlova for a short interview, but now we are following the strong skier Caroline Stromberg from Sweden. Greetings go out to all Swedish guys and girls in front of the screen watching the run. We are sending love from Austria here from the sunshine deluxe without wind and she's taking it super fast. What a nice finish in her run. What a nice finish and now we can watch outside seeing her live for her last turns in the big powder here and she's coming with a lot of pushed energy and let's see the highlights of the run. I think that's where she had the small hesitation. No, that's the lower part actually. And she got stuck now on the last meters, same as Sarah here. It's not easy, so maybe here the snow gets a lot heavier and uh, taking off the skis means a no score here. And we have some time to talk to the next Freeride World Tour rider, Anna Orlova, the snowboard girl standing here with Flo Ali. Congratulations, Anna. Um, you're all smiles. You looked like so relieved when it was announced that you got the ticket. I had a feeling today you were not riding the same way with the same just like freedom of heart that you did on last comms. Was it a bit in your head that you, you needed to do a good run today? Yeah, I was just a little bit scared about the condition and it was like, it was more scary about because really hard, uh, icy part to powder, to rocks and like really hard to understand the way exactly which snow is. So I was try to be more safe and like be be still like show my skills but uh, a little bit down not to kill myself <laughs> <laughs> Anna here you can see the camera you can wave to all your fans out there watching you you got the ticket and uh, I wish you good luck for the next season as well yeah, thank you very much thank you Anna good luck for your next year on the field world tour thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> what a set of emotions here and we are back with bib number 23 dropping in from the start gate the swiss girl eva batola she is a professional biker riding also the downhill bike we can see it on her social media channels and now we can watch her live on the run from the hangar yeah it's amazing she's 22 years old but always had eight has eight seasons uh, under her belly five on the junior tour and then three in the adults and uh, already has a victory this year in Montefon, the four-star event that was all hers so she's totally capable of winning a four-star event in the girls skiing field anytime wow very nice drawn view beautiful big air wow no hesitation that entry by eva battler very nice top part it is so nice as a rider. If you have a nice air top and you stick it, it gives you so much confidence for the rest of your run. And I'm sure she's full of that right now. And also for her, it's possible to get the ticket to the Freeride World Tour. And I think she's entering a part we have not seen today from, this, from the women. She's the first girl riding here and maybe heading over to the Huge big cliff explosive. down there. Wow, all that middle part she wrote is of a huge exposure. 
She can now line up the last cliff. Here it's comes a no fall turn. zone, and here comes her drop, stomping it with stomping legs, and now it's getting loud out there. People are shouting. She is waving with her arms, a lot of excitement falling off her, showing a spread eagle. What a nice view here. The last jump, incredible. But please keep it together all the way to the finish line. We saw two times already that that hidden crust in this lower part can be very sketchy. Here we see the last drop, very strong legs pushing her back in the skiing position and she is now in the finish area being totally pumped and she does know she needs a first and a second to keep the chance for the Freeride World Tour ticket and uh, I think at least we're gonna see her being ranked first right now. Pretty smart, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be super smart sometimes, but um, not all of the time I can be smart. Uh, in this case, it's a uh, yeah, a hundred, a hundred percenter for me. With Carolyn getting it, no score. Obviously, Eva Battler has to be first, as she's the first skier girl down who did not lose a ski, and I think it's going to be a solid score. Now, that's, of course, the most important part if you're standing down in the finish area, waiting for the score, being pumped of the last cliff. We can think of the emotions, of the thoughts she has right now in her head. And uh, she is smiling, so she is happy with her run, I suppose. Yes, she is. 74-33, that is a solid score. I think the only way she could have done a little better was be to be more fluid in the middle part, but there she is over a easily 50 meter high cliff exposure. So actually a smart move not to risk anything in that part of the face. 74.33, as we remember in the women's snowboard category, this would have been the highest score. Um, let's see what the skiers have in their backpacks, in their pockets to show. Well, the next girl, Megan Beto, oh, Megan Beto, she has a lot in her pocket. She sits in first in the ranking now, scored two second places in the qualifier. So she is, to me, pretty much the favorite of the day. She is the favorite of today, and that's how she started, super fast into the face. Wow, with a lot of speed traversing here to the entry of her line. And now she found it, and she will show us a nice first section, getting the speed out again. Now heading Whoa. over to a big thing. Very, very smart riding from her, making a small double, but still action here. And now the first cliff, perfectly executed. Watch out, oh. no, 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 no. Hope. Yes, yes, yes. It looks like she's okay, but I also think she lost her ski here. Yeah. Yes. What a pity for the young rider here, Megan. 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 I'm sorry, Megan Beton. She lost her ski, meaning uh, no score being ranked on the lower part here so it stays super super oh. close because she's already has 4200 points she was second in nonda second in yasna well, she's definitely out of the race for a victory today but with the two second places from the first she went she's still right in the battle for the ticket to the Freeride World Tour. But what you can do now is only go to the finish line, sit in the sun and hope that our direct uh, competitors are not doing better than getting a second and a second. Yeah, now she's finishing her run, going down to the finish area, but still she will get a no score because her binding was open. That's the rule in Freeride World Tour qualifier as well as Freeride World Tour. And here we can see the top part very very strong showing just jumps that air lands nice she, i think she went a little faster than she was uh, planning to and then at this little right side turn her she got caught with ski, the right ski exactly. and then Ouch. tumbled over this rock so 
it always looks super hard but we have strong and fit riders and we have the next rider with bib number 25 the girl from spain elizabeth marina she has 21 years she's a gymnast she has perfect body control and i saw a lot of tricks on her instagram not only with skis but also in the gym and we also saw her was a huge and yes and probably the biggest one of the girls but she unfortunately had a bit of forward lean and then went into a massive role of tomahawks probably one of the most spectac most spectacular crashes of the ski women um, we've seen in the in the season this year but it doesn't hold her back from being in the start gate again today following her run on the right side making some solid turns trying to keep it fluid and now entering for her first cliff oh. no and also her she got caught with the tip of her ski and then falling to the front and uh, I think that's one of the most difficult parts in skiing. Once you get caught, you have only one chance putting the ski to the side, but then you have to be, let's say, uh, very bendable and <laughs> very gymnastic to do this exercise. And for her, it means a small crash and uh, a high deduction of points. And looking at the ski goals now, we can definitely tell that the, the conditions with that fluffy and deep snow is um, more difficult for the skiers to ride than it is for the snowboarders because the snowboarders could just you know uh, surf it down more on that on the surface and the skiers uh, just sink in more and have a higher chance of one ski getting caught in the deep snow or at a uh, hidden rock what a pity and as you said Flo if you have a nice cliff and you have a well execution you are pumped but if you fall your head is just tumbling you're thinking where should I go where I am right now should I finish my run there are so much thoughts coming into your mind and um, that's where you really have to concentrate once again because you are in a phase with sometimes 40 degrees of steepness and it's not easy to find the way through the rocks here if you lost your orientation but she is well down in the finish area and I'm excited to see the snow right now because we already saw two girls falling in the in the in the last part of the face and I think it's not too easy because sun is coming here a little bit more so snow is getting warmer more heavier and uh, it's more easy to get caught with your ski that is definitely true especially if you're like hyped up after a good run and you all feel like you're in the finish line <laughs> this is when you uh, when it grabs you let's look at the highlights here starting with the first cliff and then getting caught in the deep powder falling to the front and that's what we don't want to see here in skiing and therefore she gets the 20 points still down here and a lot of excitement now going down of course you are a little bit angry with yourself a little bit sorry for yourself as well with such a lot of preparation here in Gurgl and we are already with the next rider here in Gurgl and this should be pip number 26 Jenna Keller from Switzerland exactly she sits in fifth row with a third and a fifth place and still has chances for a world to a ticket yeah, wow, and we have she gets herself into really difficult terrain. It's going to be a double out. Wow, Beautiful. what a nice Very double. Well done, Jenna. Perfectly looked. And you see at the landing spot, there was nearly no snow, making it more easy to stomp it and not getting caught by the snow. So very, very, I would say, a genius in searching for the line. Very well scoped. And what we can't see now that about 80 meters below her is a huge cliff with about 50 meters. And so another think, double. Wow. Wow, she is showing what's possible here on skis and now it's getting super steep. She has to get the orientation. We saw one rider before in this part and there is a big cliff waiting down here. She is making it smart, playing it safe without jumping the last cliff. And now it's all about keeping the legs together, standing on the feet and making it good to the finish. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see a high score right now. And again, look at this. 
beautiful First double one. at the top. And then the second double. Shortly stopped, bam, bam, and well executed. Congratulations to the Swiss rider, Jenna Keller. Actually, she's a translator for French, English and Spanish, so speaking a lot of different languages, which is nice down here in the Finnish area because we have such a lot of nations competing here. And she gets the hugs, she gets the party and the girls are loving her run down there as well as we do. Congratulations to the 27-year-old girl from Switzerland. So, Flo, we are checking. We have a lot of sheets, as you can see here. We are always checking the scores, checking the riders, and writing down the most important. And this one we can write down with 70 points, sitting on the second place right now. Jenna Keller from Switzerland with two really, really nice doubles. So, congrats to you from our side here from the cabin. Yeah, very nice. All she was liking at that run was uh, like an exit there at the very bottom, which would have given her the five or six points she would have needed to take to take first. But I'm pretty sure she, she knew what she was doing and decided to, to uh, stick to the plan she had. As we're going up to the top, and now, gentlemen, it's going to get exciting. Our <coughs> youngest competitor in the Snowboard uh, Ski Girls field, Astrid Jelus, yeah, only 18 years old, but look what she's got under her belly. Once junior world champ, two times European junior champ, and three times French champion. <laughs> and she's only in her first season as an adult. <laughs> and look at her scores for the finals. A sixth place in Nanda, a first place in Jasna. So if she's taking the first place today, she will be qualified for sure for the World Tour. And that's where she wants to go. The young girl, 18 years old, and now directly in her run and entering the NAR here. And not slowing down just because it's so rocky. Wow. Wow, so much confidence for the girl and what a nice jump here. Super fluid exit out of that rocky area. Wow. She's coached by Seb Show, one of the most experienced. Whoa, 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 whoa. What no, stop, 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 stop. Please stop here. She already stopped. And also for her, maybe we can see it later in the replay. I think she got caught. I think just her got left caught. key just stopped and she kept on riding. That was a really and that's Great the big momentum. question here. We already have April, so sun is getting stronger and stronger. We have the north, northeast phase. Uh, Flo is just saying no, snow conditions are not affected. And uh, it's just because we have some parts where it's very, very deep and some parts where there is just a little fresh snow. It's just what I said before. We saw those snowboarders floating on the surface of the snow more and the skiers with the pressure of their body weight being distributed on, on both skis. We see that sometimes one ski just sinks in more than they expect. Whew. Tough moment for us. I don't see, I didn't see a mistake, you know, that that top part showed so strong right. Look at this confidence, bam. And then she rides and look at her left ski now. Look. Yeah, it just, just got caught up. and then yeah. turning around and there is no chance to, uh, yeah, execute out of this position. No chance to, to help yourself getting up again. You're just, uh, yeah. Oh, she you can't just fall in what here. Just you see the yeah. emotions. The strong rider with 18 years of age. There is a lot of time. She is always free riding with her father. That's what was was that what was the beginning of her career. She is uh, skateboarding, loves horse riding as well, and coming straight from La Clusa, which is a really really nice place to practice free riding. Well, Astrid, you have another 18 years of freeride competition ahead of you. So if this is not the one we score a victory, there will be other ones to come. Of course, you're thinking about the overall scores. So are we. But let's wait till the end, um, till the last rider is down, before we make any <laughs> thoughts or announcement who will grab the ticket to the World Tour. 42 points for Astrid. I think a big thing in freeriding is also the experience you take on a mountain the experience you take with different conditions and a little more experience has this girl with pip number 28 petra olsen from sweden dropping into her run with a ninth place in nonda a sixth place in jasna and also for her there is everything open if she takes the win today exactly and i just want to mention astrid sits 
<laughs> even sits in fourth place right now with another three girls crashing and she, her not losing his key. So this is getting more and more interesting. Wow, and she is taking a nice cliff. Now with a lot of speed, that's where you have to watch out, not getting caught or something. Turning for her next cliff, taking the control again. Wonderful. That's skiing at its best. That's what we want to see from the top riders from the European region. And she is now at the lower part. I think we can see her right now in life. And she is above the big cliffs, so she has to traverse to the left side. And then we are excited what we're going to see if she's taking the cliff or not, if she's riding it the same as the girls before. And now we can see she's checking to get the orientation again, still riding because you have to keep the fluidity high. And now she's traversing. I think she's looking for the cliff. Flo, she's looking for the cliff. She is going. Here comes the setup turn. He is, she's going straight now, taking it very, very big and safe. Very, very well done. A clever takeoff, a clever landing, I would say. Yeah, it took her some time to approach that. She just wanted to make sure she uh, takes off at the right spot because if you take the cliff at another spot, it's about 50 meters. And very... No! No! I can't believe it. Not again. Mamma mia! Petra Olsen getting eaten up by the crust out of the finish line like a couple of other riders before already. But and let's look at the beauty of her run first. A very beautiful engaged top run. part. And she stayed super fluid in this... Um, in this funnel of the exposure. Look at this big nice bottom cliff air. and then Bam. the storm. Bam! Without any hesitation. And then here, just the ah. left ski. Digged into the snow and also for her, it's... <sighs> I'm so sorry at this stage because we can just watch and talk the best we can. But uh, still, I think uh, some people on the top already got the information, got the, saw it on the streams, on their phones, so uh, they will take care of the skis, maybe take it a bit closer together to have a broader surface to really surf on the snow without getting caught by it. Yeah, but that was actually what got her uh, nice. She had her skis very close together, and I think one ski got kind of eaten underneath the other one. Wow. We have, out of six girls, we have only two down with a clean run. 40 points for Petra. Whew. Meaning this would have been a very, very good yep. score here. And we are already on the last skiing women for today. So we are very, very fast moving forward between the categories and getting the best pictures here. Thanks a lot to all the people behind the camera to the, all the people behind in our van delivering the best of the best highlights, the best views from the race drones. That's what we are going to expect here if we have the finals and that's what we deliver, the best of the best. And now out of the start gate, number 29, Manon Loshi, She's sitting on third place right now. Exactly. She's on third place overall, so has a chance to get that ticket to the tour. She's also being coached by Zeb Michel Jo from the La Clusa area. Uh, free ride team, and it's only her second year with the adults. That's uh, amazing. Those young, uh, those young boys and girls. At, I only did my first real competition when I was 24, and they started when they were 14. They're collecting so much experience in those young years. And taking a Whoa! huge cliff. What's that? What a well execution here from Manolo, the young super French rider, almost right out of the start gate. Wow. You need that was spectacular. such strong legs to land this one. She doubled it where others just jumped the lower part. She just over jumped the second part, taking a huge cliff down. And now watch out. She's in the NAR with the race drone. We can see how steep it is here, how much control is needed to really ride it out safely. And that's, that's the perfect example, I would say. Yeah, very nice uh, last second. I'm sure she has a third one for us at the bottom, uh, the bottom part. Orientation is very difficult where she's right now. You don't want to mix up uh, one cliff with the other. Let's let's see which one she did chose to finish her run off. Well, looks like she's going for the biggest one there is. 
taking the biggest Whoa. one. A little back seated, and now you see the left <laughs> ski nearly got caught. She removed it out of the snow, riding on one ski. We can see how well they are with their skis and how well the body language. And now we're gonna see Stay a on girl. your feet, Manon. What a skiing, like one skiing away out of that last uh, landing. Wow. And look at this cliff again, if you have it now in the replay. That was huge. A huge cliff, doubling wow. it up and then landing it safe and also in the lower part. She didn't stop with the action. She showed us some more and now Here. the last girl from skiing category is down there. And uh, this is going to be a calculation I don't want to do right now. Whew, we don't have to, we just... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we just wait till we get those scores. So 74.33, Eva Battler sitting in first right now. That's the score to beat for Manon Doshi. Wow. <laughs> Chris is looking at me like, what are we going to do? What are we going to calculate? Are we gonna calculate? Are we gonna calculate? Are we going to calculate? Should shot? we start to calculate? No. no. Uh, let's keep the job where it has to be done by the Freeride World Tour officials. They're gonna deliver the results and we're gonna see the winners of today. And before we get some drone action here, <laughs> congratulations to the drone pilots. It's incredible how fast these small cameras are already. Huh? It is. And we're waiting for the score of Manon Loshi, second youngest uh, competitor, 19 years of age only. And 74-33 is the score to beat by Eva Patula. So we have... And Manon <coughs> If, if Manaloshi does win, that also means a ticket to the ball tour. Are you sure? I'm very sure. It says it here. No right assumptions here. We're no, making no a lot of people angry no in front if of the Manon screen. If Manon does it first, she is on the tour. Oh, she oh, got second. 72. 72 points. We start... We start with the ceremony, the <laughs> small ceremony here. And um, they are celebrating crazy. Oh my I God. don't think. Do, do you have the, 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 the scores right now? So, who is in first place? First place is Eva Batola right now. So, if she's first, 4,050 points altogether. If Manu Longhi is second, it's 4,600 points. We have Megan Betten sitting with 4,200 points right now. Uh, so she is. <laughs> Chris is getting it. Not to... Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. Congratulations to the girl from Switzerland, Eva Patola, for taking the win with 74.33 points. Manon Longhi from France with second place, 72 points. And Jenna Keller, strong Swiss riders here on third place. And the next graph we see will be. <sighs> who is taking the two slots for the Freeride World Tour 2023. And that's where the girls want it to be. And I just got the information that we are waiting for the final scores. Of course, they have to take care that they calculate everything right. We know it's three finals, two scores count, meaning you can have one low score. You need two very, very high scores to have a chance here. And um, yeah, we're waiting for the calculation part here. But nevertheless, it's gonna, whoever's going to get those tickets, thank you girls for a great show. And uh, wow, that was really spectacular skiing. That, that last air of, uh, of uh, Manu Loshi in the higher part of the stage was amazing. And really great. Congratulations to the three winners of today. Let's just feel these emotions, these smiling faces here in Gurgel. What a nice setup here. It takes such a lot of work to have a contest here. We realized it. They have been here the last five days preparing, checking the face, checking the conditions, again, uh, making the safe safe again. And um, we have here the second, Manu Lo. She, she's placed in second, smiling. And we're waiting for the official, for the official graph who is going to take the two spots, the two slots for the Freeride World It's not often that you have, so to say, two events, on, events in one as we have today, like looking for the winners of the day and looking for the winners of the season. Flo, what does it mean if you get the World Tour ticket? How is the preparation in summer? What, 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 what was your plan when you went to the Freeride World Tour? 
Well, it is a bit of a life change, I know. It, it's where, as a free rider, if you're out there with your friends in the trees in the mountains every day, um, you're by yourself. And then all of a sudden you have this platform to show you skiing. You have uh, the potential, the chance to get sponsors that pay you money to, to uh, display their product. So it uh, opens up a whole new world, especially at the age of 18 and 19, that some of those competitors are, to go to the World Tour. That's like a dream come true. A dream come true and not an easy dream because it means that uh, you really have to concentrate on next season, get prepared in summer, do the body workout, do the right workout and then compete with the best of the best in the Champions League of free riding. And I think that's a spot where everyone wants to sit, but not everyone will sit for a while. Exactly. Well, we're sitting like on fire waiting for <laughs> the result you can, of the you can hear my seat. of the skier girls. <laughs> And I hear from backstage, it's going to be coming in every second. We have the results and next year's Freeride World Tour start for ski women category will be Manon Loshi from France and Megan Beton. 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 I'm sorry for the spelling. These two girls are the golden girls taking the ticket for next year's Freeride World Tour. Happy faces here and a lot of happy faces here in our van and also from everywhere. Congratulations. You are the most incredible ski women opening up the category for next year. Wow. And with uh, Astrid uh, Gelus just now making the cut, I think she should still be happy because she didn't do anything wrong. She just fell victim to tricky snow conditions today. Wow. Whew. Whew. Action finished for the girls. Action starting for the ski men category. And uh, we are super excited to show you the start list being on the screen right now with bib number 30, Simon Perodin dropping in from Switzerland. Then uh, we see the second part. We have all together 20 ro 21 riders here and uh, we have a lot of possibilities. As we said already, Max Hitzig took the ticket already. He is here as a ski dude, not taking part in the competition, but on the second place. Rainer Valentin from Austria. Then we have Simon Perodi, and now you can see our spot here at the Freeride World Tour Qualifier Finals. This is our cabin, this is our snow truck, and uh, it's freshly prepared with a lot of cameras, with all the Rishi in the background. Now, really nice pictures you can see from the drone, what kind of setup is needed to bring you the pictures, the live stream, to uh, really get all the information done from our side. And now we can see the face where we are dropping in with the last category of today's competition. And it's the ski man category. We are waiting for the most action, the most incredible tricks to be shown here from the Hangara face. And uh, Flo is entering the cabin again, sitting next to me. Flo, we are ready for the ski man. Oh yeah, we are very ready. <laughs> we are so ready. We are definitely ready. And I hope you're ready too. If you just joined the stream, very welcome from our side, out of the cabin. We're starting in with bib number 30, Simon Perot. Perodin or the Simon Perodin from Switzerland. He is 19 year old, coming from Ver Verbier, has a first place in Jasna, a 27th place in Nonda. So all the possibilities are open for him. And we say, let's get it on the action. Taking a double with a lot of speed now. Getting the control again for a nice 360 here, directly in the face, a no-fall zone. Yeah, my maestro, uh, half of the man's skiing field is like 18, 19, 20 years old. Like for him, it's just the first year on the adults and he already won a four star and he's already in uh, competition for a ticket to the tour. Wow. Guiding his skis here through the Nar and then entering the next zone with a huge cliff, a major Whoa. cliff. Whoa, well <laughs> executed. Now it's getting loud in the finish area. Taking a double. Watch out. Now is still concentration. Still concentration on the last meters. We saw some really hard mistakes followed by <laughs> some super action in the snow. And this guy is pumped. Let's see the 360 on top. 
very well executed. A huge left huge hand three. Huge bomb. 360. It, as if it was nothing. So well executed. What it means to jump and do a 360 from that cliff and the crowd is going crazy for this guy. The young Swiss rider here opening up the contest, the category for the skiing men's. Wow, that last air was just insane. Wow. So big and so controlled. Whew. We arrived in Gurgel and now we are waiting for the score for bib number 30. And uh, looking up to the next rider, just to keep you informed, is bib number 31. Of course, Leo <laughs> Druet from France, also 19 years old. Uh, freestyle jet ski rider. As I saw, so a very interesting sport. And very interesting is also Simon Perez score 8367 for the first rider down. 8367, wow. what an opening score and everyone watching up there, watch out, this is a major score. Yeah, and he already has a first place from the last event in Jasna. So wow, he can be stoked, he did everything he could to potentially secure, secure the spot on the tour, which they're all waiting for. So an amazing run by our first skier, Simon uh, Simon Perodin from Switzerland and Lege Drouet is the next one, also 19 years old. His first year in the adults, same as for Simon. I'm just amazed, you know. And we can hear it in the background. Three, two, one, drop in for Leo Drouet from France. 19 years old, as we said, with a 14th place in Jasna, 24th in Nonda. So for him, it's all about winning the contest, taking the crown of Gurgel here from the Hangara. Yeah, exactly. I love those drone shoes. You get such a good feeling of where the rider is and about the speed and how he's moving around in the face, setting up the next, uh, the next cliff. Oh. With a huge backflip! A little hesitation in the landing, but not totally. Definitely a control issue there, but... Uh, huge backflip <laughs> down <laughs> this cliff. <laughs> wow, so it looks like that central part is establishing as the main line for the skier man. Um. I have a feeling that after this, uh, that Leo considered his control issue more or less as a crash because he didn't, uh, definitely did not follow the line he had planned and shifting back a couple of gears on the way down for the lower part. Here we see it again, a huge backflip down <laughs> over a double cliff. You have to rotate very, very fast because it's a, let's say, a, a, a downwards uh, takeoff. So you really have to get the rotation for the backflip and uh, that's what he did, incredible skills the guys are showing here. The second rider from today's man skiing category. And um, let's check what the judges saw in this backflip. If they also decided to count it as a crash, then we will have a high deduction of points. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, he definitely had a massive uh, control issue there with a the back slap and then riding out on one ski. But it was not a cra full crash. He didn't lose his ski. So I'm kind of surprised he didn't keep on uh, riding um, the way he planned because the middle and lower part was definitely what, what he uh, had laid out as a line. We can he see here on the left side the judges panel. So we have three judges, Dorian Conrad doing the head judge here and they are deciding and discussing about the points. They saw a crash definitely counting 54.67 for the young French rider.
so and we are up at the start gate Hugo Troubon from France dropping in right now we can see him wishing him the best of luck the most of fun and the best of the show for his run yeah it's Hugo's third season uh, with the adults of a couple of successful uh, junior seasons he actually finished eighth place already last year so not far behind those Whoa, and also for him spot. with a backflip landing it perfectly <laughs> wow perfectly done the backflip he's showing how it should look like if you jump this cliff with a backflip attempt it's amazing it's like a six seven meter cliff but just enough time for the guys to complete the full rotation but he did it very smart and landed in a fresh landing pocket very very perfectly executed and now he's already at the lower part and i think this guy won't stop here he will show us another action there are some cliffs to come maybe he's doing a double now getting out of it super fast he needs to get the control again and you can see it all the time there is the left ski caught the right ski caught so not easy to ride here uh with the skiing category but he did it very very well and it was the first backflip being landed let's look at this again coming in with a lot of speed rotating <laughs> very very close to his body so he needs a lot of rotation uh, to not under rotate and then land in the snow with some weight in the front and he is now entering the finish area with a big smile congratulations to the young French rider 21 years of age I am pretty sh it seems to me that he got lost on the way up this backflip because also he was uh, the way he usually rides you know he would line up some major major bigger airs or tricks but he was basically cruising down the lower half of the face so I'm pretty sure not the run he was looking for after his uh, amazing backflip It's got to be a breeding brown of good free scales in Lazar. Getting a score so from 60.33. 60.33. Und jetzt now, sind and wir gentlemen. zurück. Ladies and gentlemen, jetzt wird die Stimmung richtig laut hier. Jetzt wird es richtig gefährlich. Valentin Reiner, das erste Jahr auf der Tour, dann den Cut nicht geschafft wieder neu in die Qualifikation, dann kommt der Typ daher und macht einen zweiten Platz in Nonda, einen fünften in Jasna und er braucht jetzt ein Top 3 Ergebnis, um seinen Platz auf der World Tour wieder zu fixieren und genau auf dieses Ergebnis zielt er es ab, ich habe mit ihm gesprochen, er ist gepumpt voller Energie und er wird uns jetzt den Run seines Lebens zeigen. He is, he is second in the ranking but needs another top spot to requalify for the tour. Now waiting for a huge backflip also. Wow. Very well execution, no hesitation. Valle, jetzt zählt's, bring das hinunter, bitte. And he's entering the steep part of the face, the funnel above the huge exposure, keeping it super nice and fluid. Doubling out to the left side. Vale Reiner, ein wow. Double. Und jetzt heißt es auch für ihn, Konzentration behalten. Oh, Der ist natürlich voll gepumpt mit oh. Energie. Jetzt kommt noch ein Cliff. Und noch oh. ein Cliff. Taking it straight out of it. <lacht> Valentin Reiner. Sehen wir hier. Ein Ergebnis wie damals bei Konsti Ottner. Ein Ergebnis wie damals bei Fabi Lensch. Das war mit Sicherheit bis jetzt der beste Run hier in Gurgel. Gratulation wow. dem Jungen, dem Perfekter Rider, best friend mit Tau Greibich. Ich krieg mir nicht mal einen Flug. He can't, you cannot put a run down better. That bottom cliff when he positioned himself up there, I knew he was gonna go for the biggest double possibly his face. And um, look at this. Oh, you think you go around? No, why? I just go double. <laughs> Another four, four meter here. And then let's just fly 20 meters down the mountain. Unglaublich. Like Speed is your friend. Valle Reiner, big ups to you. Natürlich muss ich an dieser Stelle gestehen, es ist ein Österreicher. Wir würden hier gerne einen zweiten auf der Tour sehen. Und genauso gepumpt ist der junge Kerl hier unten im Ziel. Valentin Reiner, 23 Jahre alt. Und ich glaube, wir sehen hier einen Top-Score und hoffentlich ein Top-Ergebnis. Yeah, Top-Score for sure. Hopefully top result for one. Let's try not to get to nationalistic <laughs> I'm sorry Valley. guys I'm That's sorry like guys I'm just a human equally <laughs> no matter what nation they come from <laughs> but uh yeah stoke for any riders bring a run down like Valley look at this smile I'm just uh, following him and I'm sure his coach Stefan Häusl is also following here and Stefan I think you can be happy with this run as happy as Valley is right now 
and he really wants to requalify and he wants to do it on his own and not by luck and that's what he showed right now. And 92.67, 92 we cracking the 90 seven. points. Congratulations, Vale. Wow. 92.67 means we have a new leader here in the category, but there are still a lot of high quality riders on top and no time to celebrate too early. No, we have, we have a, a new leader, but no time to rest because up at the top is our Swedish passy guy, David De Ligt, Mr. Backflip, as they call him. He also was in the Tour last year and uh, is definitely looking to requalify. And he sits in fourth place, so just uh, two spots behind Valentin Reiner on the qualifier series ranking. With his best result, a first place in Jasmine. So with the podium, he would definitely be a threat to any of the others looking for that World Tour ticket. Now we are here with the Swedish guy, Pip number 34. He's a climber. He is throwing topless backflip on skis. And he is not only called Mr. Backflip because backflip is his trick of choice, I think. Exactly. Coming in a in a super zone. Same area. So I'm going for that And back also as well. for the big backflip. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> They are stomping it as nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the contest in Gurgel, not getting ourselves done here in the cabin. I hope we're not too loud for the rest of the crew. And now watching David Delif, also for him, it's super important to score a high score here to get the ticket. He has a chance for the ticket. There are three tickets. Available, still available, available after Max Hitzing took the first place. So three guys dropping in for the World Tour ticket here. And also for him, he's doing hopefully not the same again with a lot of speed coming down. And also very safe landing from the guy here. And now it's on the judges. What they saw, if they saw another feature on top, if it was riding faster with more control, that's all the issues they gonna look at. And I am pumped for this guy. Wow, wow. amazing wow. run, amazing buddy. Run, buddy. <laughs> Congratulations here from the cabin. Incredible backflip. Stomping it as it would be nothing. You see, layback backflip. Boom. Concentrating on the next thing. Unbelievable. Almost identical line to Valentin Reiner. Maybe, and I say that as an Austrian, a little slower in the middle part. Reiner, to me, might have kept it a little bit uh, more fluid, but that was really the only difference. Super clean, super nice. And that last year, but David, yeah, you have a right to smile, David. Congratulations. Congratulations to the rider here. Incredible show. Wow. Would that have been your line of choice as well, Chris, if you had had to compete today? Definitely. Put me on top of the face and I would go for a safe run. I would never go for this backflip. I think the times for big backies are over for me. Still enjoying the snow, still going for my lines. But as a worker, you just have the weekend as a warrior. And we are watching back to David De Leaf. He is waiting for his score. And this is not an easy topic right now. I mean, you cannot really put any more features in this uh, venue uh, than David and Valentin did. A backflip at the top, a fluid middle part over huge exposure, and then this crazy double with the huge last air, full speed blasting out the bottom. Wow. 80.33 for the Swedish guy here. Maybe judges saw something we didn't see right now. No, I think it was that, that speed in the middle part. He had he, at one point he came to a stop, even if it was for just for a second or two, and he was a little lower through that funnel where Valet just kept it fluid in turns and actually did a little uh, double also on the way to the last air. And I think the judges now need also to keep that judging that point range open to have room for people in between. But let's get back on your seats. Let's get back on our seats. It's Tendra Katsuno, bib number 35. He's from Japan. That's why it is European Oceanian region japan is also part of it and that's why we have the strong competitor with 18 years here he was a mogul and slope style skier born in 2000 so really young guy and also he's showing super crazy action wow yeah he has shown some super strong riding in those last runs and goes oh, into oh, oh, a oh, 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 new oh. zone we haven't seen anyone in this crazy area Not a reason for him to slow down, even being about the most <laughs> doing of it like it's imagine. nothing. Wow. 
incredible and, and also for him oh, oh, oh. A little hesitation rider. going in bigger and bigger <laughs> <laughs> incredible Kami where style. are the fans from Japan <laughs> I hope you're celebrating with us together I think you have a different time than we have but still time for partying together with Tenra Katsuno from Japan a little hesitation after this cliff but that was perfectly done look at this the highest spot to jump off the next highest spot landing with warp speed getting it under control and this is what we call free ride we are arrived here so they get a little deduction for the landing of the back previous but which, which was not as clean as the one of uh, ones of david and valentin but what was stand out to me on this line was the middle part this crazy narrow couloir with about 50 meters of cliff below him, he just blasted right through there. It was nothing. So it was really a mix of big mountain skills and freestyling at its best. And it's the mix you need, actually, because you have to show that you have in your line the big air parts, the air and style parts, the fluent parts, the fast parts, as well as the technical parts. And that's what he showed right now. And he has shown wow. so much, so amazing, so many amazing runs this year, but always had some kind of mistake that I, that I put this touch uh, as his points down. But I think this one should be a really good one. Wow. Dendra Katsuno, only 21 years of age. And we are celebrating every rider, and still there are such a lot of riders left on top of the mountain <laughs> who wants to get the ticket who wants to take the win here and i think this is just the beginning of a big category <laughs> and he's normally such a gentle mellow person who hardly ever claims anything but <laughs> he is really stoked <laughs> and this one is allowed to claim with 77.33 points congratulations goes out to japan to the young japanese rider yeah, so I think what, uh, what got him there score-wise was the landing of the backflip. He probably lost uh, close to 10 points up there. Otherwise, he'd probably be uh, in okay, second right now. Okay, let's get back. Our next rider is already on track. Manu Barna from New Zealand. 20 years of age with a 6th place in Nanda, a 22nd place in Jasna. And um, he was shredding the Skyline Park in Innsbruck at the Nordkette. So he is a freestyler and going with full speed. Unbelievable from <laughs> this guy in front of a no fall zone coming in with 70 kilometers per hour, taking a double cliff. And this is just the start of his line. Wow, look where he's going. Wow, 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 wow. wow. <laughs> Normally, you have to say a double is a small first, and, and a big now going that. for the big one. <laughs> Keep it on your feet, this strong rider. Incredible. It's getting loud out there. People are watching it from the finish area. People are watching all over the world. You are following, hopefully, the screen. And now we get the highlights of his run. Coming in here with warp speed. Wow, Boom. He's the man of triples and doubles, a triple to enter the face. Look at this stuff. He has he lands and then has to take off immediately again. Bam! Barely shuts down. Actually it was like only two triples all Look the way down. At this. <laughs> and if you scope a line like this and you have to be sure to wow. get out the speed at the right moment, not falling over the cliffs, doing a line like this is has to be or has to get the biggest of respect here from our side and that's what he gets just now of all the yeah. other competitors look at those sides yeah. people are stoked with him wow yeah. he's showing hour. the whole palette of free riding it's not only about tricks it's also about speed and it's about air and even with no tricks you can impress the judges and us and all the viewers yeah there has been a quite a bit of discussions following this year's free world tours where the conditions were not very big mountainy because of difficult snow conditions so there was a lot of freestyle happening and the vibe in the scene was like, hey, come on, guys, let's bring big mountain riding back into free running. And this is what we're seeing today. There is room for some freestyle moves, but overall, we want to see those guys charge down those cliffs at full throttle. Yeah, charging down. He showed us the best of the best. And it's not easy to sit now and give him his points. We saw 92 points from Valle Reiner. I think this one's going to go right up to, uh, to close to, uh, to Valles. 
I dare to say that. We saw a lot of different obstacles. Because the, there was no mistakes and it was just a creative line. At the speed and the difficulty was just all up there. 89.33 sitting on the second place right now with 89.33 points. Wow, he's got to be stoked. And we are back on top. Paul nope. de Portales from Switzerland. And he's got to win the category of most competitions. He did 13 competitions uh, this winter. No victories this year, but quite a couple of podiums. Sitting in uh, 13th right now in the qualifier ranking. 13 competitions, that is a lot of motivation right there. 13 competitions, 13 times checking a face, 13 wow. times planning a line. <laughs> That's not an easy season. And uh, he is also showing oh. us a huge... Ooh. Yeah, he had a little mistake on the in-run to this backflip, and I think he decided on the shortness that it must work. I must have enough speed, but he did not quite, and his key tips did hit the rock as he was <laughs> upside down, but it didn't look like uh, he hit the rock himself, so he should be fine. Just his pole is a meter or two up from where he is right now. Yeah. And he can walk for his pole. I think he is all yeah. right. He was lucky to get caught just with the skis and then land in the let's say soft snow let's have a look again look maybe run, we and can then you see can it. tell he was thinking see this, that was a mistake and he loses the speed and say i'll go for it anyway and yeah bam. and these are the decisions decisions <laughs> decisions <laughs> i'm sorry these are decisions to be made in a very very short time oh yeah split second and uh you just have a split second to decide whether to jump for the backflip not taking it straight or just stop and ride around so here we can see the ranking on first place sitting right now. Vale Reiner from Austria, followed by Manu Barna from New Zealand with 89.33 points and Simon Perodin from Switzerland on third place right now. And we can work us through the whole field of the leaders of the European category here. And the uh, next one will be Blake Marshall. A very experienced rider, Blake, having uh, three seasons on the Free Ride World Tour uh, already, with a 12th and a 9th and a 6th there overall, and uh, desperately trying to get back onto the Tour. He really wants to re-qualify for the Free Ride World Tour. He is one of the New Zealand Kiwi guys. They know how to rock it in the snow. And we can see the score for Paul is score of 20 because of his crash definitely reasonable yeah but most important yeah it was not safe he did not lose his key that's why he also has his core but we go up to the start and mr blake marshall he is one of those who do the biggest 360s over the biggest cliffs as well he did it in yasna and i'm pretty sure he's gonna do it again today with 27 years the third oldest guy it, here in the start field it's amazing to call someone old in <laughs> free riding I, i'm I 28 i'm trying to be still young <laughs> i was 42 on my last free ride world tour <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so guys oh. let's keep the concentration high let's watch blake marshall if he shows us one of his beloved 360s somewhere and the new zealand kiwi guys they know how to jump off the cliffs even if there are some rocks they don't care and take it with warp speed showing a nice double with a lot of control and even has time for a little shifty at the second takeoff and that's what the judges want to see to have the control in the air doing some shifties and now he's entering the nar yeah with a nice grab safety grip there coming out lining up seems like similar air as vale and david ah taking some speed oh. out of it no oh Maybe and doing an unintentional missed. somersault over the bottom cliff. Calculated here, but, but he is good. He's fine. He's waving with his, his waving with his arms. Uh, it looks like rather than David and the valley who jumped this cliff straight, he was going to slow down and potentially do a 360 off it, but then got hung up with one ski just before the takeoff, and then that's just tumbled over it. But luckily, that cliff is even a bit overhanging, so he landed safely in the snow pocket at the bottom. We're happy to see yeah. it now. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah You're he right. Just he got about caught. to go for a 360 and then got cut up. Whew. 
and probably have a bruiser too, <laughs> but uh, he's fine. Wow. I'm happy to have like a moment to breathe here. Whew. Yeah, we should take the moments to breathe also for the people in front of the screens. Take a moment to breathe. We are super excited as you can hear. Leave us a comment if you would like to see some more information, some more actions for the next years. We're always happy to improve here and uh, we are happy to have you in our stream right now for the competition, the Freeride World Tour Qualifier Finals the last final of the year with the best riders and another one is sitting up there in the start gate Edwin Olsen from Sweden Flo, what kind of information do we have about him? Yeah, what's special about uh, Edwin is that he, contrary to many of the other young riders did not uh, spend like a junior um, career on the on the Freer Junior Tour he just kind of sidestepped in last year and. Um, <laughs> showing very strong performances here now sitting in eighth overall with his best result a fourth in um, and also he is aiming the, for whoa. a big becky wow so Look perfect not perfect a millimeter execution. of his body out of place not at the takeoff not at the air not at the landing so clean as if he was in the park and not slowing down that is super no, important being super fast wow, guiding wow. through this with Very a nice much double. like Vale did it beforehand, just keeping the momentum up. And now, Whoa. what? With a really, really nice attempt, just doing the second cliff and not uh, playing it as a double. So definitely the most fluid middle and lower part. I'm not sure about the landing of the last cliff. It was just a big cloud of fluffy snow or if he had a little backslap there. We'll see it in the replay here in a second. So beautiful, that backflip in the signature white clothing which he wears at all these events. That middle part was really amazing. It's more fluid than any other riders before. And let's look at that landing. Oh, unfortunately, that was what they call a, like a full backslap, at least a stage two, if not a stage three, when we're back really touches the snow and the tips of the skis come up a little bit. That will be a major de deduction. So, not gonna challenge the top rank riders right now, but I really like this run, so fluid and so committed. Beautiful. Wow, as we're waiting for Edwin Olsen's score, uh, we're actually already halfway through the field. Yeah. We are halfway through the field and um, waiting for the score. That's right, I just checked. He was sitting on the eighth position with 2,000 points. He would have needed a first place, maybe with the small back slap. Could be difficult. Let's see what the judges think. And as we are waiting for the scores, we have a short interview with the leader, Valentin Reiner, right now at our van. Wally. One question only. How do you feel right now after putting down a 92 points run? Pretty good. We were a little worried about you when you started to point it straight. We're not sure you maybe uh, took the cliffs wrong and started pointing too early, but you knew exactly where you were. Yeah, I know that works. I just wanted to go really slow on the first one and then everything worked out pretty good and it was way, way, way easier than expected. Did you get some information up to the start? Because it seemed that uh, the girls really struggled at times with the changing snow conditions, like uh, quite a few crashes with the skis getting stuck. Did you get information to that about that to the start? Uh, I think it's super good still in the venue, only like the flat bar after your run is a bit affected from the sun, but still... If you go straight, it's easy. If you go straight, it's easy. That's what you need. Thank you, Vale, as we go back. Thank you, Vale. Good luck for the future. And now we missed two very, very important points. 75 points for the last rider. And on course, we are ready with Nevmo Plagne. Plagne? Plagne? Plagne. Plagne from France. We'll see another backflip. Bam! Wow, 75 for Edwin Olsen means that with at least, at least 10 to 15 points being taken off for his uh, bottom backslap, he was right up there in the, in the 90s uh, range with Vale Reiner to that point. Also, Nemo Plane, a very competitive rider with 10 events that he participated and in look, this look, year. And look, look, now, 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 heading for a big Whoa. cliff. We didn't see that one. First time we saw the cliff and he takes off, takes the speed afterwards, perfectly under control. And now heading to the right side, as you can all see. 
he has some more plants in his pocket, that's for sure. And now searching the right cliff. There he is. There he is with a nice shifty doubling Ooh. out. And that's what Wally just said in the flat parts, you really have to take care. And that's what we see right now. The guys are already sitting a little bit in the back to keep the tips of the ski out of the snow, which is super important here in the lower parts. And look at this, a backflip, how it is made with a little hesitation in the landing and then a really nice clean air and a double to finish it up and just to show, hey, I'm here and I can ski. And this is what the guy does at its best. Nemo Blanje on his 11th comp this season. Very creative middle part, wow. But look up at that, if you look up to that rock, Chris, which you can see right now, there's a big black spot <laughs> in his landing. So the back of his keys must have landed right in the rock. Even more amazing that he could ride off it so well. And 722, 33 for Nemo Planja. Putting him in seventh place right now. Wow, as we have a nice run from the Hohe Mut Alm, one of the top spots in the Google Ski Resort. And very nice public viewing area. You can sit actually inside and watch the competition uh, while you're having some great food. Next rider on course is Paul Denton. And for him, it's a super important run as well here from the Hangara. Yeah, he has one third place from the event in um, uh, Nonda, so he still has all the chances to qualify for the tour. He won the four star in Montefon just a few weeks ago, which one of the biggest backflips us of the season. And this and is what we're going rider. to see right exactly. now. Whoa. It's the backflip cliff. Also for him, a little control issue here. Yeah, that is probably 10 points gone. So he probably definitely has to make up for that in the lower part of his run. And also for him, he's now aiming for that one, and he perfectly did it a little bit more on the on the right side, Lucas' right side, yeah, to not land on the rocks. Very, yeah, very, very smart. clever. And, and also for him, aiming the double, aiming the the double down there. Ooh. Stay on your feet. Congratulations. <laughs> and now bring it down to the finish area. What a run. Oh. Look at the top part. You have to go very, very far to have a fresh landing. And that's why you have a little compression in the landing. And here, the clever landing next to the open zone from the last rider. Yeah, it was really smart that he did. For the next year, please mark it in your calendar. You have to be here. You have to see this show in live. And we are waiting for the scores of BIP number 41, Paul Denton, with high chances to get the spot at the Free World Tour. Yeah, but you can see at his face and body language that the run did not quite work out as well as he wanted to. He was not as clean as he was hoping for, as for his winning run in Monte, for example, was. And 70 points is his score for the day. So, Paul sitting with 70 points. And we're looking back up to the next guy, a very interesting uh, starter. 33 years of age, Jan Dumas Baudron from France, one of the oldest, actually he's the oldest in the field, the field today. And he only started competing at the age of 28. Reminds me a little bit of myself. Sitting in the 10th place right now. And he know he can do it because in 2018 he won four four stars in a row. And then was on the Tour of World Tour on 2019. And now he's back to give it another shot. Still getting his GoPro set up by one of the start guys. <laughs> and this is the moment. This is the moment where you breathe the last time and then you enter the tunnel. You enter the tunnel of the hunger of face and you get spit out in the finish area. Let's see where he is building his tunnel. He is crossing over to the right side, what makes it more interesting because he's not aiming that backflip cliff we saw from the riders no, before. No, but using that upper, upper area like as a race course. Wow. Okay, still he is aiming for the same backflip as it's wow. nothing. Sticking it perfectly and we're switching to direct view because riders are just like 200 meters in front of our eyes as they're coming down into the middle part. 
and he's lining up the same as Paul and Don before him. Hopefully he knows he has to angle a little bit differently in order not to land on the rock which sits in the landing. He just goes Perfectly. further. Very smart solution. <laughs> and imagine landing here and then doing this right side turn to get to another zoning. We have not seen this before. I'm not sure if he missed his last obstacle here. That was. What do you think? There was. It was a nice. Uh, let's I say a nice line. Imagine that was here. his land plan because he was so rock solid. Look at this: the backflip and the middle air. Solid as very nice. It would be nothing. And then he knows he has to line up a third feature at the bottom, and he just doesn't. So he might have just raced past the double, which we saw from Valentin Reiner, um, Baldenton, and other riders just beforehand. Yeah, he looks like <laughs> like what happened? <laughs> Where was my third air? There was a cliff somewhere which I wanted to find. <laughs> and it's a gun. <laughs> not not that easy because we have the view from the front of the face. The rider doesn't see anything. He just sees the next cliff and the next place he has to move with his orientation. Mm -hmm. And um, as we can see, he is not the happiest with his run. But still, you did a backflip, a crazy backflip. You had a nice cliff. There is still some time to celebrate, to be there in the finish area, to stand here safe after a run like this. Yeah, no, he, he was on, uh, on his way to a podium run with a, with a third feature. Definitely. But obviously, with this quality of riding, if you uh, skip one of your three features, then um, uh, you won't have the same score as those who managed to put three uh, big things in their runs. Yeah, and as you can see in our cabin, it's getting hotter and hotter. Now Flo is also in the sun. How does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care. I just, uh, I'm just i stoked to see those guys coming down. I hold my breath every time they enter one of the, the big cliff zones. It's amazing to be here and watch. Uh, Jan Dumas Baudron. So he's like the grandpa here. 71.33. Flo, can you press the button and let us know the standings? Maybe we can also see the standings as we have a rider, a wildcard rider from Austria. Michael Strauss, jetzt am Start für Österreich. Er hat eine Wildcard bekommen. Wir kennen ihn unter Sender Strauss. Er ist Model, er ist Superstar. Er ist eigentlich alles hier in Österreich. Und er wird sich jetzt das Hangerer Face geben und ein paar Punkte sammeln. Für ihn geht es nicht um eine direkte Qualifikation für die Freeride World Tour. Er ist hier, um den Contest zu rocken. So, Michi Strauss, local Austrian Wildcard. Uh, not called the sender for nothing because he typically sends it and he has no pressure whatsoever because for him it's not about the qualification to the field world tour for him it's just to put up a great show on the hangara and he's approaching the next air worth a backy also for him a huge backy here i think they really decided that this cliff is going to be the backflip cliff of the day yeah, and afterwards it looked like he was almost going to crash the drone, which was probably flying <laughs> Michi, a centimeter away from his head. Michi, was machst du da? Jawohl! Wow. Super kreativer Ansatz da, wie er da drinnen gestanden ist. Kurz überlegt, ob ich da einen Funkspruch raufmachen muss zum Senderstrauß. Aber nein, der weiß, wo er ist. Und auch er geht jetzt für das Double wow. und oh. sendet das so weit. <sighs> Unglaublich. Sender Strauss hier hoffentlich ein nichts passiert. Michi, bitte gib uns ein kurzes Zeichen. Ja? Er schaut mal ganz gut aus, er bewegt sich, tut die Brille rauf. Da war schon in der Luft klar, dass nicht alles ganz okay ist. Normalerweise ist er ganz stabil <lacht> in der Luft. <lacht> er ist auch stabil im Schnee. Okay, er alles ist stabil. stabil bei Michi Strauss. Er ärgert sich, das ist immer ein kurzes Zeichen. Ich weiß nicht, was da am Absprung passiert ist, aber er war in der Luft schon mehr am Arme rudern, als man das von ihm gewöhnt ist und ist dann, glaube ich, einfach nicht in diese Landezone so reinkommen, wie er sich das gewünscht hat, um das zu sticken und klingt raus. Allein schon der Speed, den er da mitgenommen hat, am zweiten Cliff, die weiteste Landung von allen. Vielleicht sieht man es da jetzt mal ganz kurz im Schnee, wie weit der da runter gesegelt ist. Und äh, jetzt heißt es, äh, ja, Equipment wieder zusammensammeln und für uns ist es, eine kurze Pause zum Durchschnaufen, zum Genießen. Meine Damen und Herren, nochmal die Highlights von Michi Strauss. Der war ganz kreativ, der Entry da. Wow. Und jetzt schauen wir uns an, was da beim letzten Air in der Luft los war. Hier passt noch alles. 
schaut fast so aus, als hätte er ein bisschen Vorlage bei der Landung, warum er dann sofort in diesen sogenannten Tomahawk äh, übergeht, genau. Übergeht, danke Flo. Und es scheint auch, dass der Winkel, den der Wale zum Beispiel gewählt hat, ein bisschen mehr auf die Riders Right beim Absprung zu gehen, die bessere Transition bei dieser Landung geben hat. Das ist glaube ich das e typ team was es hier aufgebracht hat. And maybe we have a short time to look at the standings and how they are right now. Well, we have them here as well. Valle Reiner still in the lead with 92 points. Uh, and here we can see it on the right side. Valle Bana from New Zealand and Simon Perrodin from Switzerland. And that means a lot because Manu needs a top score to get the points. And also Valle needs this first, second or third place to secure his ticket for the Freeride World Tour again. But there are such a lot of strong riders up there. 44, Edgar Chiloui, the brother. And uh, 45, Victor Hale Woods, Andreas Jenewein as a wildcard rider, Ben Richards, Lalo Rombal, Oscar Mandin, Elias Meister. So uh, still a, a bunch of really, really top of the notch riders and uh, still some riders who can take the win here in Gurgel. Exactly, especially the next one, Edgar Gelus is the one to watch out for. Um, he had a crazy crash at the last event in Jasna where he flew about 20 minutes through the air and landed on a rock red and snow. But uh, he was fine. <laughs> Actually, he skied it out. And for the parents, it must have been a tough one because uh, he had the biggest crash of the day while his sister Astrid on the day was taking the win. It's always between uh, excitement, happiness, and um, yeah, a little bit of bad luck if you fall after a landing after or if you have a big <laughs> crash. But in the end, the most important to stay safe here and that's what we hope for the last rider and we see pip number 44 Edgar Chiloui 19 years old two years ago winner of the uh, junior world qualifier ranking so definitely a guy to watch out for and dropping in is Edgar Chiloui from France Yeah, this face is only two flat parts, the very top and the very bottom. Wow. Going in with warp <laughs> speed! Wow! <laughs> What an entry to the face. Zero hesitation, top and speed. And now entering an area wow. where nobody was before. It was just Michi coming from the right side. And now him wow. coming from straight above. What a run so far by Edgar. Super clean, super fast. And also he is pointing at the Give big cliff and jumping it with warp speed, landing it up perfectly. Wow. What a great run. Applause to the young wow. guy here, Edgar Chiloui, 19 years of age. Oh, he's going to be so stoked. So stoked, you know, as a 14th and a 22nd. Look at the top part, look at the top part. There down. is only one turn. One, two, three, lining up three <laughs> clips in a row. That's what the judges and the visitors and everyone wants to see. And now the lower part. This is a seven, eight meter cliff and you drop it with high speed and then straight to the finish area. Congratulations to bib number 44. So a little smaller than some of the other top riders at the bottom but he made up for it like big time at the top section and the middle part no freestyle moves but the speed he had entering tripling into the into the face was amazing and then opening up a completely new zone in the steepest part of the face wow i bet the judges are gonna love that the judges gonna <laughs> he loves love it that's that, for sure he loves it <laughs> that's the most important that you are happy with your run, that you're happy in the finish area. And the spectators are shouting whenever there is some action coming down the mountain. The hangar, perfect for all the visitors because you see the whole face from the straight. Look at it. On the last event, his sister uh, Astrid winning. He was one of the biggest crashes of the day. Today, Astrid with a mistake that turned around in the middle of the face and he potentially on his way to an amazing score.
Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are here, we are watching and we are super excited because there are a few riders coming. We have one from Switzerland, an Austrian from New Zealand, from France and again an Austrian Elias Meister finishing up this category and Edgar Chilui with 86 points sneaking into the first three. Wow, he'll be stoked. The best result of the three at work qualifier finals for him for sure. As we're going back up to the star to a very well known name, Victor Halewood, his dad being the founder and still organized the CEO of the Fiat World Tour. He's here as well watching his son in the start gate. And Nick, uh, Victor is doing well. He's fifth in the ranking, has a fifth and eleventh place. So, with a top run today, he would still be able to secure a ticket for the 2023 Free World, World Tour. And that's true, so let's watch what he brought to us. Only on his first year uh, with the adults, still just 18 years old. It's amazing, those young riders with all this experience. He had a great run in uh, in Jasna, just with a not-so-clean landing. And watch out, what is, well. what is he doing? What is he doing? Going for the biggest air possible in the upper section. I wouldn't have wanted to be his dad right now, standing at the bottom. I can even watch your son doing such crazy stuff. Ooh, now I understand my parents a little bit better <laughs> that they would never <laughs> watch when I was riding. And another double. Perfectly. Wow. And now going for it. It's no. the crazy. What's no. that? What's <laughs> this guy thinking? <sighs> Unbelievable. Victor, that was would have been the run of the day. But I don't know if this was stickable. This was a 360 over a 25 meter, not even vertical phase. I don't want to wow. charge if it was possible. I'm pretty sure that he can do it and that he can stick such a cliff. But that was amazing. Look at I think more airtime in the whole run than being on the snow. This run was absolutely incredible. I can't believe it. <laughs> We're just looking at each other, <laughs> laughing and being super happy that he's still safe down here. And we have a photographer down in the field being That's next to him. Please have a look again. Ah, could we could we have the, 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 the highlight again from the from the clip? I think this run was too extreme even for the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> look at the landing. Uh, for his last and he biggest feature, you can see a huge black spot. So it seems like there was just like 20, 30 cm of snow on rock, and I think that's why he was he bounced away so hard. And uh, look how landing. huge that cliff is! How huge is it? Let's let's measure it in in, in meters. Ah, uh, here we have it again. So the that upper section, one, two, two, making it to a double, getting the control, wow. super strong legs, and that's where he took off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That must have been like 10 meters cliff. And of course, that's really, really hard exercise for the legs. <laughs> what he is showing to us best. And look at these drone features, these nice pictures we got. We are happy that you are safe and we are happy that you have all of your equipment. And we can breathe again. And um, <sighs> wow, wow. Victor, thank you for an amazing show, an amazing display of, of flying choice, of big mountain skills. Unfortunately, not of a perfect landing on this last feature, but it was still incredible to watch. Whew. And now he is getting back to the finish area and I'm sure the crowd is pumping and he will get the props because that would have been a first place for sure <laughs> yeah. here this was a definitely a display of all or nothing and now we are back at the start gate andreas jenewein auch ein wildcard rider here der hier in gurgel startet beim vier stern contest für ihn geht es ums sammeln von punkte um aufzuzeigen dass er auch das Ticket im nächsten Jahr lösen möchte. Und der hat es drauf, der kann es auch schaffen. Schauen wir uns an, was er geplant hat. Ich bin mir sicher, viel Action. Ja, der kommt von einem super Wochenende. Er kommt von einem großen Wochenende in uh, Kitzsteinhorn, at Kitzsteinhorn, weil er ein Three-Star-Event gewonnen hat, nur acht Tage ago. Also, a lot of confidence für ihn. Und er ist ein lokaler Ski-Instructor. Und jeder war jetzt ein Dreier, perfekt. 
beautiful three at the backflip flip. That is what I call variation. And you can tell this guy can ski as he's racing into the steepest part of the face. Und auch für ihn geht es jetzt da zu diesem Drop, den Michi Strauß schon von der rechten Seite gemacht hat. Auch er ein Double landet das perfekt und kommt jetzt natürlich zu dem unteren Riesenglied. He says, I do Ach, what the others do as well. One, two, and two, and, and, two. and can you stick it? stomping yeah. it perfectly. <laughs> what a nice 360 at the backflip cliff. And now with a double ending up his run, Andreas Jenewein. <laughs> <lacht> Gratuliere an dieser Stelle schon mal von uns. Wir schauen uns die Highlights an. Es geht Schlag auf Schlag. Look at the three. He told me Kitschstein Horn before the comp, it might be the last comp of his career. He thinks about ending his competition career. And then he wins the comp and puts down this amazing run here. Und auch er unten. So first one. Erstes, zweites. Da ist keine Zeit zum Boah. Überlegen. Da heißt es Ski auf <lacht> gerade Position stellen und ab ins Ziel. The young Austrian showing big display of skills today, and he's going to be stoked. <laughs> he's definitely going to be stoked, uh, and we are stoked to have him here at the competition. Wow, as we expected, hardly any time to breathe in between amazing performances of this key man category. I think we totally forgot to talk about them. Qualification and points and anything like that, which is getting carried away by the action. Of course, um, just to give you a short summary, uh, the qualification now changed for the Freeride World Tour. So they make a cut in the World Tour where they sort out the best riders and some riders who have to re qualify. And these riders are competing with all the qualifiers and the best qualifiers from the Europe region for the last tickets for the next year. So Three contests, three finals, Nanda already done, Jasna already done, Gurgel, and this is where we are right now. Exactly. And after this comp today, there's four tickets for the World Tour, for the uh, region uh, Europe and Oceania, and four tickets are given away in the United States of America in the whole US region, uh, pretty much these days as well. And then eight riders will have the spot, eight male skiers on the World Tour. As Andy Anyway still shaking and trembling, waiting for his score. And we see one more time the beautiful three at the top. Bang! Not an easy takeoff up there, huh? Very interesting that he cannot take the ticket, but he can shuffle the whole system up again if he takes the win or if he takes the second place. He's taking away the points other people would need for the qualification. And that makes yeah. it so interesting for these riders to really show their skills and maybe sneak into the ranking to uh, yeah, shuffle the whole thing again. Exactly. Well, definitely one of the best runs if of his career, I would say. Andy Jenewein. <laughs> Die Judges sind sich unsicher. Ich weiß, du hast einen super Run hier gezeigt und wir werden jetzt bald mal deine Punkte aufleuchten sehen. I think it's gonna, gotta, it has to go close to the 90. It was, there was no major mistakes. The three at the top was perfect and uh, the bottom air was double was as good as those of the others. It's gotta be right up there somewhere between and uh, we hear from all around 87.67 <laughs> so he is sneaking into the top places here in the men's category and um, that is making wow. things more difficult right now and we're gonna have bib number 47 ben richards from new zealand he learned skiing at the mammoth mountain he joined the line team 2021 and he is now ready for his action with the 26th place in Nanda and the 12th place in Jasna. He is one of those either all riders. He won a four star today in Verbi, but then... Wow, oh, nice beautiful double. Part. Uh, top part, I'm sorry. Wow. Oh, that's the Japanese couloir. And here we can oh. see how steep Whoa. it is. Taking it as a double. Oh. Stay on your feet. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> very much Ben Richards line one more time, trying to make the impossible possible. But also wow. he is waving with his hands. We can see him now with the race drone. Everything is all right. It's just the skis and the poles that are missing. <laughs> Not that he would have had anything else. Also the air brake <laughs> is starting to come out. So he has a big gear yard till the middle of the face. 
Wow, that was the entry double. It was already beautiful. And then he goes into the team cooler. And now look at this. The biggest triple of the day lined up. One, two. Two. A little bit in the back seat, trying to ride out number three. Almost getting it together. Wow. I'm pretty sure if he wouldn't have landed back seat like this, yeah. he could have done it. And then we would see a triple. <sighs> he was As actually, no one did before. Yeah, he was much, much closer to pulling it together as it looked when we saw it the first time. Wow, Ben Richards, Mr. Either or. <laughs> it's win or lose for him on most competitions. Wow. <sighs> yeah, and you have to imagine the riders up there. We can see right now the ranking. Valentin Reiner still on the first place. Manu Barna on the second from New Zealand. And Andreas Jenewein sneaking in between with a third place and 87.67 points. And what does that mean for all the riders being up there? They know that they have to have a really high score and a perfect line to get into this ranking. That is true. And if I look at the, uh, the next riders, uh, La Lourambeau and Oscar Mondin, they don't, uh, they're not sitting uh, too far ahead in the ranking to be a threat to Valerina. Elias Meister is close to that, but it's looking very, very good right now for Valerina with the run he has and the score he has to secure uh, the ticket, which is looking for. So, to ladies and gentlemen, tour. we are looking on the last uh, three riders being up there in the face. It's me, Christian, and next to me, Flo Orly. We can, uh, yeah give you the best of information to commentate this contest it's a lot of threatening moments already and the people are watching in the public area at the Hohe Muta and they are celebrating still it's Monday and that's why I say thanks for tuning in all the people on their workstations, workplaces, whatever, from the tablet, streaming from the mobile phones. I hope you are with us and I hope you are seeing this action here at the Hangara. Yeah, an incredible action it truly is. I mean, we were talking a little bit about possible lines this morning, but we have seen <laughs> a few a few runs and a few uh, features and combos which we weren't even thinking about that they were possible. So the creativity and, and what people, what the riders think that they can pull off is truly amazing. And again, it's not easy because yesterday in the meeting, they changed the zoning a little bit because they had to make the place a little bit safer. There was a small avalanche going down, but on purpose that's always very very important to tell because they are looking with the safety guys and what we look now is up to the start gate up to the third last rider and it's Lalo Rambo from France the 19 year old with a 28th place and a 13th place in the finals yeah only his second year the adults he's also been coached by free world to legend uh, Sebastian Mijot and we saw what that means, like Manolo, she's coached by Zep as well, and she pulled off a magical run today with the skier girls. Smart top and she by the lower, choosing a little bit of a different air, uh, the backflip flip, and getting a fresh landing. And this is what we talk when we talk about Ooh. free ride. Ah, I think he got caught by a, by a rock. Yep. His upper ski just got eaten away and uh, sent him down. He still has both skis. He can continue his run. But uh, obviously that high score he was hoping for is no longer reachable. And now still aiming a really, really nice double, showing that he is not finished yet. That's what we want to see, even if they have uh, small uh, problems in the landing. You have to finish your run to get pushed for the next season, for the next year's qualifier season. And here we can see the highlight. Wow, Started that was beautiful. Started super clever. And then just getting caught. Even if it was not a rock, maybe it was just uh, the deep snow as we had it before. Yeah, you know, when the snow is uh, as fresh as it is here today, basically some of it still fall yesterday in the fall, fell yesterday in the morning, um, it doesn't have time to settle and get more compact, so those keys sometimes just stick all the way in. 42 points for Lalo Rambeau, and that leaves us with two competitors up on the mountain. Two competitors up on the mountain, and it's 
Oscar Mandin being the next one with bib number 49. Also a French rider and we see a very, very strong uh, field of French riders. Yeah, Oscar Mandi or Madin, I'm not really sure. Um, he yeah, came up with an amazing uh, movie last year um, that he made with his friends and he only came quite close to qualifying to the Tour. In 2018 and 19, he was six and seven overall. The top four always go to the Tour from the qualifier series. So he's definitely hoping for a strong result today. And he is pumped and that's what we want to see. He is pumped, the GoPro is running and now we get the information. Three, two, one drop in for Oscar Mandin, the second last rider of today's competition and today's decision for the Freeride World Tour tickets. So now we know if he's going to the right, that doesn't mean he's not aiming for the backflip. And now here we have the backflip wow. landing it perfectly. At a new angle, very smart. <laughs> and probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest backflip we've seen on the oh, cliff oh, today. Oh, 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 and now look at this. We had a few riders going down Whoa. here. You have to have a nice landing spot. And that's what he finds right now. Traversing to the right side, getting his speed under control again. And now being in front of the double wobble finish jump and he is doing it straighten it out and land it perfectly what a nice run here from the young french guy oscar mandin mandin 24 years of age very complete run making very short work yeah he's stoked look at he's these such a great idea and he didn't have the results he was really hoping for on this year's qualifier um, finals but this was definitely one of his best runs of the season no mistakes, top to bottom, one, two, three, bang, bang, bang. Just and here we have speed. the nice footage from the race drone following him and he is rushing away with warp speed and now celebrating with all the colleagues down in the finish area. That's the pictures. I know I repeat myself, but it's so wonderful to watch. They are all one team. Everyone has his best friend with him and uh, they are competing all the season long in one gang, staying together, sometimes sleeping together in the vans. That's a nice sharing community and that's why we are here celebrating together with them. Wow, a great one. Look at Oscar, He's just, he was so bummed out, you know, it's, he's one of the, the most, uh, you know, highly regarded skiers uh, in France right now in free riding and he just couldn't put it down in the events this year, but this was a very strong display of his, uh, of his abilities. And again, the few in our cabin, ladies and gentlemen, very welcome. <laughs> nice wishes go out from Gurgel here at the Hangar of Face. Here we can see the judges' place, which is right next to us. So on the right side behind our truck, the judges have their place. They're watching with binoculars. They're watching with a replay screen um, to get every obstacle judged right. And um, I think they don't have the easiest job and they're doing a great job here in Gurgel judging the Freeride World Tour Qualifier Finals. Yeah, they definitely do. And not easy now to, if you look at the scores, 92, 89, 88, 87, 86, 83 are our top six riders, so very close together. And I'm pretty sure that uh, Oscar's gonna put his foot somewhere right in there. And as we are waiting for the scores of Oscar Mandin, we know that we have just one rider up there and it's an Austrian rider. His name is Elias Meister. And for him, there is also a huge chance to take the win and to get the ticket if he scores first place. Exactly. But now we are concentrating, sorry, but <laughs> we have to concentrate <laughs> on that score, not jumping into the front. Yeah, Morsin Avoya, his home resort, as you can read on his helmet. <laughs> and Schulbo, team colleague of mine as well. 88-67, putting himself in third place. Just kicking Andreas Jennewein uh, off the podium by one spot. Congratulations. And we are up with Elias Meister already, our last ride of the day. And he has a fourth place from the last event in Jasna. 
doing Starting a nice 360 just by traversing and that's the sign I want to win. Der zeigt uns jetzt, yeah. Elias Meister möchte diesen Spot natürlich auch holen und wenn er erster Platz wäre, wenn er diesen ersten Platz erreicht, dann hat er die Chance, auch er macht es ganz, ganz smart, er weiß natürlich, dass da schon einige hinunter sind und er eröffnet jetzt vielleicht sogar ein neues Feld ganz auf der rechten Seite. 21 Jahre jung, kommt aus Bischofshofen, gehört also da zu den Young Guns. Er, er braucht unbedingt diesen ersten Platz, aber er möchte es natürlich auch genießen, so wie das da ausschaut. Ist hier im Fresh Powder Phase. Ja, 2360 schon auf seinem Konto und er ist noch lange da unten. Er ist not down yet. Elias Meister, was hat er noch dabei? Ein riesen Drop, perfekte Transition, die er da gefunden hat. Also perfekte Landung, ist er last genau air ins Flache. Ins Transfer air. Amazing. Am Flachen wow. vorbei, ins steile Landing. Und der freut sich natürlich. Und jetzt heißt es Füße zusammenhalten. Wir schauen uns das nochmal an. 360, Nummer 1, hier am Anfang gleich. 360, Nummer 2, macht es ganz, ganz clever. Und unten ein Big One mit perfekter. Transition, die er da findet. Wow, not as much big mountain style as some of the other rides today, but nevertheless, two beautiful threes and the last air was really great. Very well scouted into the transition. So, und jetzt heißt es hoffen. Now we click on the hope button because we are not <laughs> able to calculate in this field of strong riders. We won't uh, have the results before we get them from the officials from the Freeride World Tour. They are now collecting together all the results. They are, let's say, taking two out of the three final contests, taking the two best results. Yeah and put them together to one score. And if the score is high enough for Elias Meister, there are still chances to take the ticket. But let's wait for his score. Yeah, exactly. First of all, let's see where he ends up in today's score and then let's celebrate the winners of today. Top three at the moment, Valentin Reiner, Mano Bernard and Oscar Mander. Austria ahead of New Zealand, ahead of France. And we'll see where Elias Meister will be ranked. We'll know in a couple of seconds. In front of us, we just see the second ski of Mickey Strauss is now <laughs> found in the <laughs> skiing area and now brought to back to Mickey. Yeah, weather is looking good. We are, I would say, we are more than done because of that lot of action, a lot of sheets, and now it's on these three guys here in the judging panel. Well, what we can say already, it was an amazing event, which an <laughs> incredible show. 73.67 points for Elias Meister, so not the lead, it's right but, now. But you, you hear people scream from the finish line because they all know what that means. The winner of today, we can even announce it before we have to rank him, but I'm sure it'll coming up in a second. It goes the winner to of today! is Austria Valentin Reiner with 92.67 points, followed by Manu Barna on second place from New Zealand, followed on the third place Oscar Mandin with 88.67, super close here, the second and fourth place, just one point. Yeah, and look at Andreas Jennewein, local hero, uh, scoring fourth place, he'll be stoked about that, wow. Wow, what a big, what an amazing show. I'm happy for the young riders here taking the first three places. And now it's all about calculation. We have three slots being open for the Freeride World Tour. And that's where all the people, all the riders want to land. That's the dream. It's the Champions League. It's the highest league you can reach in freeriding. Flo, you know what we are talking about. I was never at the Freeride World Tour, but you did it 17 years in a row. And I think that's an amazing feeling to, to co compete with the world's best. Yeah, there's nothing like it. The best riders and the best venues in the world. That is truly amazing. And we ha already have one Austrian who is qualified already after the, the first two wins. So he didn't compete today. He was key duding, which is Max Hitzig. And now with Valle Reiner taking the win, we might as well have another one up there. Thank you, guys. Everybody say it was so fun there. And we are celebrating the first three of today. On first place, Valentin Reiner, and we all know what that means, and we know why this guy is so happy with his action. It means he will get the ticket for the Freeride World Tour, but we are waiting. Who other, who else is 
taking the lead here in the freeride finals. And this is going to be the three guys celebrating. Max Hitzig from Austria, Valentin Reiner, Simon Perrodin from Switzerland and Manu Bana from New Zealand. These are the four riders competing in Freeride World Tour 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, that's an official result and that's now, yeah, the tickets for next year's Champions League in Freeriding. Wow, and as we happy with the key winners I have today, snowboard winner here with me, Gabriel Verdon. Gabriel, congratulations to your victory and your qualification to the tour. Let's shake hands here for a second. I'm so stoked. How do you feel right now, my friend? Uh, so good, thanks. It was an amazing show. So do you think the special board you talked to you about yesterday from your friend Jules uh, made a difference today? Oh, yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody in France is uh, really happy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you showed an amazing run today, like the cliff you did uh, was one of the biggest of the day. Definitely stood up there with the ones of the skiers. Uh, how was it when you approached the takeoff? Were you sure you were going to land it or were you just going to say, okay, try and arrow? No, I want to stomp, but uh, when I jump, it was huge. And <laughs> I, I landed in take twice. Uh. <laughs> Super happy. Super happy are we as well. Thank you for coming by. Thanks for the amazing show. Thanks, and guys. all the best for a great season on the Freeride World Tour next year. Yeah. See cool. you next year on <laughs> the Freeride World Tour. And we have to remember again, ladies and gentlemen, these guys know they are dropping out from the World Tour like Valentin Reiner. And he knows he has three more contests where he can re-qualify. So he has to make like really, really good results in these three contests. And the man made it as well as our two more qualified riders here in place. What a crazy show. Simon Perodi being another one taking the ticket. Wow, what an action, what a show and what a nice venue here at the Hangara. Fresh pow, sunshine. I Just repeating myself, I'm sorry, but I wanted to say thanks a lot for tuning in, for having us with you in the contest here in Obergurgel. A truly, a truly amazing display of big mountain riding today. I think what we saw was uh, once again <laughs> displaying the bright future of free riding. This was just incredible. And very interesting to see the young guns with a lot of freestyle elements here. And um, yeah. That's where we are developing. Still some big mountain skiing is needed to really score high and still some tricks because we can see how many backflips are shown by the young riders. And here again in the picture, we see the guys still celebrating each other in the Finnish area. And we have another guest at Flo Ali. Exactly. Oscar Mandin, I hope I pronounced it right. Third place today with an amazing run. Super stoked for you because you had a rough season. Not all the runs worked out as you went, but today you showed that when everything uh, works out, you're up there with the best of the best. Yeah, exactly. I've been feeling really good on my skis all the season. And I really want to show that uh, when I'm on my feet, it's a good, uh, good result. I've been, uh, it's been tough in Nanda where I did a good run and I crashed on the very, uh, very last hit. So yeah, I wanted to go for the, for the win, but third place is still good. And you already produced some amazing videos, like really super high standard, and very big inspiration for the younger riders. But you still come to the competition. So what's going to be important for you, more important in the future? Is it going into free world tour, or is it just going to focus more on the video parts which you're doing already? Uh, so I'm still young. I'm 24, and my biggest dream ever is to go to the world tour. And I think I will not stop competing until I go there. <laughs> wow, that's a word. Hey, we'll be watching you next year as you're trying to qualify one more time. I hope it's a more lucky Thank season you. like today. Thank you for coming and uh, all the best for the next season. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Big ups to Oscar Amanda here in our cabin, promoting, providing us the next plan for next year. So he will still compete for the Freeride World Tour to get the ticket. And uh, we are happy to see him here on the third place in Gurgel. Yeah, and now it's time with the last uh, pictures here from Google from the Finnish area to say thanks again for all the supporters who make these competitions possible. Thanks again to Google. Thanks again for all the support. It's a lot needed here. And thanks for all of you watching the action live with us here from the venue, from the Hangara.
yeah, it was an amazing, amazing season on the free at World qualifiers. I think there was a, a, a even more amazing uh, end point to the season, showing an incredible display of free riding and with some winners who well deserve to be on the World Tour in the next year. Flo, thanks a lot for having you next to me, your great support here in the cabin. I hope you had fun watching it together with us. We're going to see each other next year for the Open Faces competitions, for the Freeway World Tour qualifiers, and hopefully have a final again here. Exactly. And don't forget, winter's not over yet. There's still a couple of weeks of great skiing and snowboarding for you guys out there, especially in Obergogel, where it's got up to 3,300 meters, and there's snow all the way till the end of May. So, enjoy your last times, your last rides this winter, and stay safe, stay healthy, everyone, and return back to our streams next year. Thanks a lot for having us. Thanks, Flo. I'm super happy. Thanks, Chris. Bye-bye. <laughs>